Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a segment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. I want to go now to Evan Perez, our CNN senior justice correspondent, with some breaking news on this topic. Evan. Uh, yeah, that's right, Bianca and Erica. We believe now that the uh, the FBI uh, has arrested uh, the uh, uh, the person who they suspect is behind uh, the leaks of these documents. His name is Jack Teixeira, 21-year-old uh, member of the Massachusetts Air National Guard. What? Um, there are some pictures there are coming in, I believe, uh, showing uh, some of the law enforcement activity there at the family home in Massachusetts uh, where the arrest was made. Uh, this is now obviously in the hands of, uh, there you see the pictures of someone who is being, we believe, to be Tashera, who is being taken into custody. Um, oh my the God. FBI uh, was preparing to, to do this. Uh, they had hoped to have a little more time as part of this investigation, but uh, the identity of this person was, uh, was made public by uh, some of the news media reports in the New York Times uh, and, of course, the Washington Post, which has been doing a lot of reporting on this over the last few days, uh, reported on his identity. So uh, I'm told by sources that uh, the uh, investigation kind of accelerated as a result of the, his identity becoming uh, public. So now we expect that he's going to be taken to a federal court there in Massachusetts, in Boston, uh, where the procedure will begin to remove him and bring him down to the Washington, D.C. area, where we expect that the charges are going to be filed uh, uh, for the, again, for his connection to the leaking of these documents. Uh, well, I think he ought to be charged with a fashion crime. What is that outfit? What is that? What is that outfit? Uh, th 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 is this what loners are wearing these days? I, I don't even understand it. I mean, it's a felony. It's a felony. Uh, did you see the outfit? It, I, I, don't I, I don't know about loners, but it's certainly the outfit of somebody who does not care what people <laughs> think of what he looks like. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Is that is is, is this what traders, uh, you know, on the short bus wear now? I, I don't know. I don't know. This, kid, this, this is a weird story, okay, and, and we haven't covered it because nobody knew, uh, you know, whether or not any of these leaked documents were real. Nobody knew who had them. Nobody knew anything about them. Uh, and so today, all of a sudden, this uh, whole case gets blown open, wide open, because of journalism. Yeah, journalism. Because the New York Times decided to do some uh, investigatory uh, journalism, and they uh, realized that there was a, I don't know, a child, he's 21 years old, Air National Guard, like a weekend warrior guy, okay, who lives in freaking Cape Cod, yeah. How does a 21, and he's a one striper, okay? For those of you who ever served in the Air Force, he was a mosquito. He, he was an airman first class, okay? That's what he was. And he was part of the intelligence wing in the Air National Guard based out of Cape Cod and had access to highly, highly classified material that actually um, disclosed how many, uh, you know, uh, uh, special forces troops are in Ukraine. Uh, there are 100 from five different Western nations were in Ukraine in the month of February. That is the first time anybody ever saw a number for the five Western nations special forces in Ukraine. Uh, there was an incident where a Russian fighter jet fired a missile at a manned British surveillance aircraft flying over the Black Sea in September. Uh, turns out that was far more serious than originally portrayed and, uh, you know, could have been, uh, you know, miscommunicated as an act of war. U.S. warnings that China was considering giving Russia the military aid. Uh, that never happened, but I remember that period in time where everybody was breathlessly reporting that China was thinking about giving Russia military aid, when in fact my gut was telling me that Xi went over to talk to Putin to tell him he was not going to give him any military aid and that he really needed to wrap this up. But now we understand, you know, that there was a leak of these particular things, these particular, and they're supposed to be highly, not just classified, but top secret, uh, segmented, compartmentalized intelligence. What is a 21-year-old kid 
Uh, and I know I, he's a grown man. I, I mean, I understand he's an adult, 21 years old. I mean, that's how old I was in the Air Force. Trust me, I was a child. Uh, but a one striper has access to this kind of material and he's free to, I don't know, at first they said he took notes and he was, you know, sc uh, scrolling down like what he was seeing in these uh, intelligence documents. And then he would put them on the disc. He, he, he's a gamer, okay? Discord is predominantly a gamer's channel where a lot of very white, very young, very racist uh, very, uh, you know, uh, into gaming people uh, converge. And apparently through, throughout the COVID epidemic, they were bonding, you know, like intensely with each other, the, uh, you know, gamers, because they couldn't, uh, you know, hang with their friends. Obviously, that's where this outfit comes from. This is a COVID era outfit. I mean, honestly, did you see it was like a red T-shirt? No, it was like a red, no name, basketball short. Is that a basketball short? It looked like it. It looked like it. But I'll tell you right now, uh, that's the outfit you wear when you're on Discord where you can't see each other. <laughs> right. Like, that's... I that's... mean, it's totally a COVID outfit because, you yeah, know... Those it's... were like basketball shorts, but those weird black sneakers and black socks. They were brown. They, they, they were brown, weird. which made it even worse. It was brown with brown crew socks and a gray tee over, you know, like Target shorts or something. I, listen, I, I honestly... Did he I... know they were coming? Yes. Okay. Uh, I knew they were saying. coming. His exactly. mother knew they were coming. Exactly. Everybody knew they were coming. And this is how he, uh, you know, like I said, fashion crime, felony, felony class. But anyway, so apparently this guy was trying to win friends and, uh, you know, uh, uh, admirers on the Discord channel. And he was telling these gamers for... Uh, he knew them for three years, according to some reports, four, according to other, and that throughout COVID, they bonded severely. They bonded, like, deeply, like, uh, you know, on a on a very um, above the bro class, okay? They were in it. And he was trying to impress them with his access to classified material, telling them that he, you know, they needed to pay attention to world uh, events and that they can't just live their lives on the gaming channel and that the American government is doing bad things and they needed to pay attention to it and showing them his notes. Well, when they weren't impressed with the notes, then he apparently went and copied. Listen, I don't know about you, but years and years ago when I worked in corporate America, okay, uh, there were certain things, you know, like copying material that you had to ha actually put in a... Uh, a keypad, you had to put a code into a keypad to even use the copier. I'm sure that had nothing to do with the fact that, you know, it was classified information because it wasn't. It probably had to do with don't waste paper. Do you know what I'm saying? But how, how in the world is this guy, without any oversight, being able to copy uh, top secret compartmentalized intelligence about our spying on South Korea, these are our allies, and that, that's apparently what's in here. Now, here's what happened. So the, the kids, the other kids who were teenagers, they started to look up to him. They started to think that he was their leader, that he was, you know, important. Not that they were reading this stuff. They didn't really give a, a rat's ass about it. But um, one of them, when he started to actually copy the material and he folded it, and we know that because the, the images that appeared in the Discord channel were f copies and folded. They had f creases in them. Oh, my God, this is insane. So they saw that he was trying to get this out. Well, one of the teens then, this is the story we have so far, one of the teens then uploaded some of the images to a Telegram channel where the Russians saw it where the Russians saw it. And the Russians uh, reported to some of our allies, you know, like South Korea's our key Asian ally, and the Ukrainian army and some other, you know, uh, interested parties, uh, you can't share anything with America because they got leaks, they got problems. Don't share any intelligence with the United States of America. That is the story. That is the story currently. I mean, it's just impossible for me to believe that that's true, that that's the story, because it's just, I, I, I don't think it's possible. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. 
would not call it a whistleblower in the slightest. I don't think that there was a goal nor some sort of accomplishment that he was looking for in sharing these documents. Of course, there's some anti-government se uh, sentiment, but that's not unlike most right-wingers in the modern day and age. OG was not hostile to the U.S. government. OG. However, he had disagreed with several occasions, such as Waco and Ruby Ridge, mm -hmm. and thought that the government is overreaching in several aspects. There was no heavy Snowden-like conspiracy here, like some people may believe. People were reading them, and they were not commenting on them. They were just sitting there, yeah. I want to keep OG's identity secret because I still care for him, like he's a family member. He is not a Russian operative. He is not a Ukrainian operative. I'll go as far to say he's not even on the east side of the world. Any claims that he is a Russian operative or pro-Russian is categorically false. He is not interested in helping any foreign agencies with their attack on the U.S. or other countries. He was a, he was a young, charismatic man who loved nature, God, who loved shooting guns and, and racing cars. He did have sort of a bossy attitude at some points, but it was more of a fatherly bossy. He did see himself as the leader of this group, and he ultimately he was the leader of this group. And he wanted us all to be sort of super soldiers to some degree, informed, fit, with God, well-armed, stuff like that. It would appear as if he sort of grew angry with the fact that only one or two people were paying attention to these documents that he was pouring his heart out into. And as a sign of just anger, he just decided to post the full documents. He was a very smart man. There's no way in any world that he would not know that he knew that these were illegal. Oh, my God. Okay, so that, that, that there is a 17-year-old kid who was part of this, uh, I, I mean, we would call it a chat room. It's a gaming room, right? It was called Thug shaker central thug shaker central and this is where uh they all became uh, bonded this is where they all became friends especially during the covid era okay and think about this that kid there is 17 years old and he's talking about a 21 year old as being a father figure something is awfully wrong in this here country where this 21 year old uh, you know kid wearing uh you know bad basketball shorts and black socks is the father figure to the 17 year old wearing a, you know a hoodie playing games on in a in a chat room called thug central thug shaker Central, and they're all saying you have to be right with god and you got to be uh, you know militia ready and you got to be fit and yeah you know i'm a right winger and blah 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 and i like guns i like racism and i like uh, video games and then all of a sudden uh intelligence documents are what he's using in order to get I don't know, friends in order to make, uh, impress, you know, these 17 year old kids in order to be their leader there. This is so unbelievable. And that the U S government had a 21 year old kid who is not even regular military. He's in the Massachusetts air national guard being able to access uh, highly classified top secret intelligence having to do with a war, having to do with our allies, having to do with signals intelligence, having to, is it, it's just too unbelievable for me. I, you know, the, the only thing that, that would explain any of it is if some other father figure was giving it to him and he was exploiting it for his own benefit to be, you know, the big the big guy in the chat room or some uh, some such crap. I have no idea. I, I really don't. But the story is that starting months ago, one of the users and it's him uploaded hundreds of pages of intelligence briefings into a small chat group lecturing its members who had bonded during the isolation of the covid pandemic on the importance of staying abreast of world events. I mean, <laughs> this is the story that we're getting here. I felt thrusted into a situation that no one wants to be thrusted into. All the documents that have been leaked, I've seen every single one there is to see, and I was in close proximity to these files. It is, it is a lot on my shoulders and it's very stressful. So obviously the whole world now has seen these classified documents. My first question for you is, when did you first see these documents? I was first made aware of these documents, I want to say about six to eight months ago. I was in a Discord server by the name of Doug Shaker Central, and in this channel there was classified documents being posted by a user who I will refer to as OG from this point. 
The documents were often listed as Ukraine versus Russia at first. However, it slowly spiraled into just intelligence about everything. Why do you think people should know what's in these documents? There's talks of foreign intelligence agencies, who's supplying what and what wars, who's funding certain things. There's talks of nuclear weaponry. Mm. I mean, that's hardly touching the iceberg. There's just stuff that if your tax dollars are funding these atrocities, then you should be able to know about it. And how did that feel to know things before the rest of the world knew them? It felt like I was on top of Mount Everest. It felt like I was above everyone else to some degree and that um, I, I, would, I would be able to brag to some people brag. that I knew stuff that they didn't. And of course, most people did not believe me. However, me knowing that I knew it myself was more than enough to keep my ego high. U.S. is acting so foolish in their handling of this. The U.S. government is not with you. They are against you. Mm. And bottom line, if they want these to be private, it's because they have something to hide. <laughs> no one wants to be a part of history in this type of way, especially someone as young as me. Being a part of something that's possibly war changing, the world changing, world altering, it's something that no one should ever really have to go through if they're unprepared for it. Okay, this is bizarre, okay? This is just crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. And there is, I mean, it's just too hard for me to believe that this 21-year-old person sitting in a Discord gaming room that has the, the title of Thug Shaker Central is worshipped by a bunch of teenagers because he's telling them that he, through his job at the Massachusetts Air National Guard Intelligence Wing, has access to and is able also to copy or photograph or fold documents and take them out of what is a secure location and put them in a game gaming chat room without detection. I'm sorry, but I just think somebody was giving him these documents, and I don't think that a 21-year-old person understands what they're even looking at. They come at it with, the government is trying to hurt you, and they're involved in this, and if, if they had nothing to hide, why are they hiding Ukraine's war plans? And he had intelligence about everything. Listen, in the military, there's this thing. It's called need to know. And if you don't have a need to know, then you don't get to know. And I don't think some kid in Cape Cod serving in the Massachusetts Air National Guard as a one striper has a need to know any of this at all. Nor do I understand how he could copy or how he could take out or how he could. I mean, don't you have to sign on to these secure websites don't you don't you know you're being monitored yes yes you do connect speak to randy call 561-270-3844 561-270-3844 today the justice department arrested jack douglas to in connection with an investigation into alleged unauthorized removal retention, and transmission of classified national defense information. Teixeira is an employee of the United States Air Force National Guard. FBI agents took Teixeira into custody earlier this afternoon without incident. He will have an initial appearance at the U.S. District Court for the District of Massachusetts. I want to thank the FBI, Justice Department prosecutors, and our colleagues at the Department of Defense for their diligent work on this case. This investigation is ongoing. We will share more information at the appropriate time. Thanks, everyone. Oh, my God. Can you imagine being Merrick Garland today? Do you, do you know how much crap is uh, on his desk? Do you have any idea what his inbox looks like? <laughs> oh, my God. So uh, you, you, you got a lot of stuff going on today, just, just a, a, a miasma of things, right? So Donald Trump is apparently at a deposition for the civil case brought by uh, Letitia James in New York City, who is civilly suing him for the $250 million that he avoided paying in taxes by 
lowering the value of his properties for the purpose of taxation and increasing the value of his properties for the purpose of insurance, right? And so she's civilly suing him to get monies that uh, she believes uh, is rightfully owed to the city of New York by one Donald Trump. Now, this is his second trip to that rodeo. Uh, The first trip to that rodeo, he invoked his Fifth Amendment right to not incriminate himself in a civil trial where there is absolutely no chance that you would ever go to jail because it's just suing for money damages. But, you know, he sat there in Letitia James, a civil trial deposition the first time around and invoked his Fifth Amendment privilege not to incriminate himself, uh, I think, hundred multiple hundreds of times, not hundreds, a hundred times would not be uh, accurate. It's multiple hundreds of times. Uh, and so today he says, oh, oh, now he's willing to go back and answer the questions, which, you know, is perilous because obviously he's been indicted 34 counts, right, for uh, doing, uh, you know, uh, uh, for, for fraud, for, you know, uh, paying uh, the Stormy Daniels payment and saying that it was uh, a legal retainer and it wasn't and all the So whatever he says in this particular civil case can be used in the criminal case that Alvin Bragg has brought against Donald Trump. And in fact, if Donald Trump is, uh, you know, going to answer questions about the Trump organization's practice, for which, I mean, the the fraudulent practice uh, of inflating and reducing for the purpose of taxation and the purpose of insurance coverage, uh, something for which his bookkeeper, as uh, you know, the right wing media likes to refer to Weisselberg as his bookkeeper, Uh, is sitting on Rikers Island for in a plea deal, in a plea deal. And even his plea deal included prison time on Rikers. So, you know, whatever uh, Donald Trump does or does not answer today will somehow, uh, you know, revisit him in the criminal uh, matter that Alvin Bragg has brought. Now, it's interesting that Alvin Bragg is being threatened his family's being threatened. Judges are being threatened. Uh, judges' children are being threatened. Judges' wives are being threatened. Uh, and now you've got this uh, kid that's a very right-wing kid that, 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 that was saying, you know, you need to pay attention. Your government is against you. Like, it's an epidemic, and it's just spread across, across generations. It's spread across this country. It's just disgusting. Okay, so you have that. And then also you have... Um, Uh, Oh, God, there's so much. Uh, The Dominion case is doing jury selection right now as we speak in Delaware. The Dominion case, which is the case against Fox News and Fox Corporation, uh, is going to start on Monday. It's going to start on Monday. And it seems like uh, the judge in the Dominion case, Eric Davis, I believe his name is, he is livid. He's beyond... Uh, he's beyond angry because he says the lawyers for Fox have sat on evidence, lied about having evidence that they obviously had. Uh, there were phone calls and there was information that Rupert Murdoch was an executive of Fox News and was much more involved in what was broadcast on Fox News with regard to lying about uh, election fraud with regard to lying about Dominion voting machines, specifically flipping votes, about lying about uh, who owns Dominion, about lying about, uh, you know, that it was designed to flip the whole thing. And uh, they didn't want to expose Rupert Murdoch uh, to having to testify. So they just didn't, even though the judge asked a million times throughout discovery, which has been going on for two years at this point, two years. This lawsuit was filed in 2021. It is now 2023, okay? And uh, they just refused to disclose that they knew that Rupert Murdoch was a listed executive of Fox Corporation, at Fox Corporation, and that he uh, had information that they endorsed the, the the people at uh, on the TV were endorsing these lies. They were actually... So the judge sanctioned Fox because they withheld information that was, uh, you know, uh, uh, important to the case. And now he's talking about having to hire a special master to go look at what the lawyers on the Fox News uh, uh, payroll were doing to keep out certain pieces of evidence from trial... And they're saying that Rupert Murdoch will probably be the second witness called 
by Dominion on Monday or Tuesday, and that, yes, Rupert Murdoch has to testify. Also, the judge uh, got to, uh, you know, remember we, we said that they were looking at summary judgment, which is when you ask the court to make a decision before the jury trial about whether there are facts that, are, uh, that still need to be tried, facts in dispute. And the judge ruled in a partial summary judgment, his judgment was that the things that aren't in dispute any longer is that Fox knew it was, well, that Fox lied, okay? And that they continued to lie to their audience because they were afraid of their audience, turning the Fox channel off and migrating over to like Newsmax, migrating over to One, uh, you know, uh, One America News and some other right-wing outlets. And so they decided to continue to lie to their audience. And also, Rupert Murdoch testified that they endorsed his talent, endorsed the lie, which is very important. The endorsement of it means they weren't just saying, this is newsworthy because the president said it. They were endorsing what the president was saying and what the president was saying was a lie and also they were doing it because there was according to rupert murdoch's own testimony there was no red there was no blue there was only green so they had a profit motive to continue the lie and the judge ruled that the trial will start at that point where everyone in in the courtroom the jury will be told by the judge instructed by the judge that the idea that Fox News lied to its audience is not in dispute. And they'll have to start there. And then the only thing left for, for uh, Dominion to prove to the jury is that Fox News knew what the truth was and either disregarded that for profit and because they were afraid of their audience, whatever reason they give, or that they recklessly disregarded the truth, meaning they knew the truth, but they just set it aside for whatever reason. Clear for takeoff. Hey, so, you know, I was telling you I was doing some tech stuff and I was and it's worth it. I mean, it blew my mind. I could barely concentrate on my real life, but all for you. Yes, for you. So what we did was we started a randyrhodes.substack.com website, and it's awesome. It's a publishing website, and so what we can publish there is everything. Can publish the video podcasts, can publish the audio podcasts, and uh, the homework is there for free. Uh, there's lots of free stuff there. There's, uh, you know, the little Randy in a Minutes. So those are all free, and now they're shareable. You just click on a share button, and you can share them to whatever platforms you like. Um, but everything will come right to your email, right into your inbox. So it's awesome, and I love it. I really do. So visit us at randyroads.substack.com. Sign up for free. Get all the free stuff. And then if you really like it, love it, need it, have to have it, then go ahead and buy a stinking podcast subscription, and you'll get both. You'll get the video and the audio. You just put buds in your ear, walk around with your phone, and listen or watch it on a big screen, whatever you like to do, you can do uh, when you buy a stinking podcast. Now, if you already have a podcast that you bought from randyroads.com, it's the same product, just a different delivery method. So think of it this way. So you got the same products, but now they're in different stores. So it's all cool. It's all okay. If you have a subscription, you will get everything that you signed up to get. If you visit us at Substack, you'll get everything that uh, we give in a subscription, video, audio, et cetera, but right to your inbox. So you choose how you want it, when you want it, where you want it, and we'll get it to you. And thank you so much for uh, supporting our show the way that you do. It's amazing, and it allows us to innovate and do new stuff. So thank you. Thank you very much, and visit us at randyroads.substack.com. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. It is. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. If there is one thing we have learned from the Fox Dominion lawsuit, it is this. What Fox does on air and what Fox employees think and say off air, well, those are not always in sync. 
And tonight we have exclusive newly released audio that shows that when it came to the big lie itself, even the central players knew there was no there there. But let me back up. A few weeks ago, a former senior producer of Tucker Carlson's show, who used to be a senior producer for Fox News host Maria Bartiromo's show, a woman by the name of Abby Grossberg, she sued Fox News. Essentially, Ms. Grossberg believed she was being set up as the scapegoat or the fall guy in the gigantic Fox Dominion defamation lawsuit. Hmm. Grossberg claims that Fox attorneys coerced, intimidated, and misinformed her to influence her deposition before Dominion lawyers last year. And so now, former Fox News producer Abby Grossberg is expected to be a witness for Dominion. Mm. And man, she has the receipts. It turns out that Abby Grossberg had been recording, using an app on her phone, discussions between Bartiromo and key figures in this case. Oh, my God. Figures like Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani <laughs> and Trump campaign officials themselves. Grossberg told Fox's lawyer she had these types of recordings. She was pretty upfront about that, but Fox never handed them over to Dominion during the discovery process. Mm. So today, Abby Grossberg's legal team played parts of two of those recordings in court. And after hearing them, the judge decided to sanction Fox News for withholding evidence. <laughs> so if Dominion wants to, Dominion could conduct more depositions on Fox News's dime. Judge's orders. Now, we don't know if Dominion is actually going to do that, but these tapes were explosive enough that the judge literally sanctioned Fox News for not sharing them. Oh, my God. So on, on, on Fox's dime, Dominion can now call back in for testimony Rudy Giuliani, Maria Baratiromo, and God only knows who else uh, Abby Grossberg had recorded during her producer days at Fox News, where she worked for Maria Baratiromo and then transferred over to Tucker Carlson's show. And in order to show the judge that Fox has been withholding all kinds of evidence in this two-year-long discovery process that's been going on, uh, they played some excerpts from the tapes that the producer had actually recorded. Here, here is one with Maria Baratiromo talking to Rudy Giuliani and asking Rudy whether or not he could prove fraud on the part of Dominion. This is Rudy Giuliani and Fox News host Maria Bartiromo talking off air on November 8th, 2020. Off air, Mr. Giuliani seems pretty candid about the fact that he really has no evidence that there is anything wrong with the Dominion voting machines. I'm going to be asking you as, for as much evidence as you can tell us about these lawsuits. Whatever you can tell us in terms of sure. evidence would be really helpful. Okay, great. I can tell you exactly what we have. Perfect. And um, what about this software, this Dominion software? Uh, that's Which that's is a little harder troubling. to tell you right. It's being, it's anal being analyzed right now. I mean, there are a couple of races that have been reversed because uh, the Democrat was triple counted, two, two already in Michigan. <laughs> now, whether that applies for the whole state or not, I, I can't tell you yet. This Dominion software, does Nancy Pelosi have an interest in it? I, yeah, I, I've read that. I, don't, I, I can't prove that yet. Okay. Can't prove that. That was Rudy Giuliani, the face of the big lie privately downplaying that he knew anything about Dominion voting machines. Well, you know, she's asking him about the court cases, right? Because there were 60 of them by the time they were done. And Maria Baratiromo is being recorded by her own producer on a phone call with Rudy Giuliani. And she's asking Rudy Giuliani to produce some evidence about these court cases that are making their way through various state courts, right? And she's saying any evidence that you have that there was fraud in any state's election, that would be great. And he said, yeah, well, I'll give you what we have. And she says, okay, great. I mean, that's a deep dive by an investigative reporter now, isn't it? Okay, so that's not her job. She doesn't see her job as telling or, or asking him before he appears on her air, what is the evidence? Like, how far did you get? I mean, okay. 
she then segues into the next thing, which has to do specifically with Dominion. And she said, and what about this software? Do you have any evidence that the software was flipping votes? Should, you know, what, what evidence do you have that there was something wrong with the software? Okay. And he says, I don't know. They're just analyzing it now. Analyzing it now. Okay. Come on the show. And, 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 and of course, you know, uh, the coverage after this phone call is totally different than what this phone call actually produced right and then she said oh he, he offers this well some places in michigan I, i'm guessing this goes back to the antrim county lie uh were triple counted that's all i know they were triple counted that did not happen that was false that was a lie and then she said and what about nancy pelosi because there was that bit i don't know if you don't watch right right wing uh, you know lunatic fringy media you probably have no idea that they tried to say that nancy pelosi was behind all of this that she had an interest in dominion voting machines and it was her doing right she's the one that rigged the election that that was actually a thing back in November of 2020. Um, and he said, well, I've heard that too, but I can't confirm it. I can't prove any of that. And then he, they go on the air and they tell a completely, completely uh, different uh, thing, right? Here was Trump on the same day. Same day. December 5th, 2020. In one Michigan county using Dominion voting systems, nearly 6,000 votes were discovered that were wrongly switched from Trump to Biden. They called it a glitch. You know, a glitch, that's like the machine bro. Numerous times we found glitches, and every single time the glitch went 100% to Biden and no percent to Trump. The same systems are used in 30 states. Believe me, this is something we're going to do because we can't allow it to happen. And complete overhaul of our election security systems because right now, Dominion is a joke. Okay, not a very funny joke. It's a disgrace that in 2020, no state in America even makes any real attempt to verify that those who cast ballots by mail are eligible and lawfully registered voters. The evidence of fraud is overwhelming. One thing in public, another thing entirely in private. Right. And this is no minor detail. This is the core of the big lie. Here is a taste of how Fox News continued to cover Dominion voting systems after that December 5th phone call. We're looking into the Dominion voting machines with this new forensic examination. Mm -hmm. So this is an investigation that has taken a few weeks. It'll take time. But what we have now is such significant and overwhelming evidence that <laughs> there is voter fraud. There is uh, a lot of irregularities and just complete disregard for the laws in these states. Now we get to we get to Detroit and we have a truck that pulled in at 430 in the morning <laughs> with 100,000 votes. And we have a machine, the Dominion machine, that's as filled with holes as Swiss cheese and uh, was developed to steal elections <laughs> and being used in the states that are involved. So there's a lot that's going to come out here over the next month or so. Tens of thousands of ballots were being illegally dropped. Uh, the machines are the worst. Uh, Dominion, Dominion. Nobody even knows who owns it. <laughs> uh, these machines are controlling our country. So it was a rigged election. It was a sh it was a really a, a sham and a shame. OK, one thing in public, another thing in private. Exactly. OK, so here's another phone call, OK, that predates that particular coverage that continued for another what year? It still continues to this day. I mean, if you watch the other night, which I hope you, you know, I hope you I don't, I, I don't know what I hope, because Fox is going to become either irrelevant or it's not going to exist after the uh, conclusion of this case, right? And so I don't know if I want you to like fill your brain with what, uh, you know, propaganda actually looked like in the United States or I don't. But it's up to you to take it in or not. But uh, let, me, let me just play you uh, on the other side of the break. A phone call that happened between Maria Baradaromo, as recorded by her loyal producer, Abby Grossberg, and the Trump campaign legal team, okay, where Maria Bartiromo is asking the Trump campaign lawyers whether or not the audits that were done on the Dominion voting machines, the actual hand counts, whether the totals matched. And the lawyer tells Maria, yeah, the totals matched. 
And they still continue to do this and allow not only Donald Trump to say this, but to endorse that it happened, to say over and over and over again, there was fraud. And it was on the machines. Mary had a little man. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Changes come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Roach Show. Turn up your mind. There's a crap load of stuff going on, uh, but let's just finish up with this Fox story. We're a little, uh, you know, behind where we thought we would be in the day because, uh, you know, we had this uh, 21-year-old uh, Massachusetts Air National Guard arrest a 21-year-old uh, from his uh, Discord channel, uh, you know, uploading all these, uh, you know, super, super classified documents that apparently a one-striper had access to in the Massachusetts Air National Guard. Okay. I'm believing that something something weird is going on with that story. But OK, so let's set that aside because we've made our way through that. Now we also have the dueling uh, courts, right? We have the Washington State Court uh, saying keep the status quo with regard to Mifepristone. And then we have the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals actually uh, responding because Friday, tomorrow, is uh, the, the end of the stay that uh, the judge in Amarillo placed on his own ruling about whether or not the women of the United States of America will be able to have access to and whether or not the FDA approval of a 23-year-old drug that happened 23 years ago, Mifepristone, will be revoked. So you have these dueling court things, and the Fifth Circuit did uh, make a ruling today. We'll go through that in just a brief moment. But I have to show you that the end of this uh, Dominion thing because they go on trial. Uh, Dominion and Fox News goes on trial on Monday. On Monday, and uh, I don't think there's, I don't know why there's no cameras in the courtroom. If ever there was a trial that the people of the United States deserved to witness in real time, deserved to see. Okay, there were two trials uh, in my in my uh, you know uh, uh, in, in recent memory, not not going back to OJ, which was you know uh, uh, it was it was on the TV, but the Derek Chauvin trial, the the the, the crazy uh, you know uh, 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 killing of um, uh, the, what was the, the 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 father and the and the the, the, the jumped out of their truck. Ahmed Aubrey. Yeah, what were the what were the, the 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 guys' names that were convicted? But anyway, that one was on the TV. Okay, we got to see that one. This one, the Dominion one, actually needs to be on the television. This one needs to be covered. This one, everybody should get to see. Everybody should be able to see Tucker Carlson testify. They should be able to hear Rupert Murdoch testify. They should be able to hear Maria Bartiromo testify. They should be able to hear Rudy Giuliani testify. They should be able to witness the propaganda, the, the propaganda channel being uh, cross, cross-examined. Because it's exactly how you don't do journalism, what they do over there. So... Just saying, but I, I'm I, I, De- Delaware uh, doesn't generally allow cameras uh, in the courtroom, and I don't think they're going to make an exception in this case. So we're not going to be able to see it, and that that really sucks for us. It really does, and for us as us, I mean the United States, for Americans who have been literally fed a steady diet of garbage from that channel. But anyway, just recently, a couple days ago, uh, the producer at, uh, at Fox News who's suing Fox News, Abby Grossberg, went to the court with her lawyers. She's now suing Fox because she said that the Fox attorneys uh, cajoled her, coerced her, you know, made her feel like her job was in jeopardy if she didn't lie or say that she didn't recall things. Obviously, she did recall because she taped these things. And now we know she taped these things. Uh, And then the lawyers at Fox withheld her deposition from her. 
Because there is, I think, 30 days that you get to correct the record, like if you misspoke or if you got a fact wrong and you want to correct the record in a sworn deposition, you have 30 days to do so. Well, it seems like the Fox uh, attorneys withheld her transcription of her deposition for months, months and months and months, where she could not go back and correct the record. And now she feels like uh, she's going to be exposed as having lied. So she's come forward. And when she came forward, she came forward with receipts. She came forward with tape. And the tape clearly shows that even now the Fox attorneys are withholding evidence. They withheld information about Rupert Murdoch's role in the company. <clears throat> they tried to characterize his role in the company as not having anything to do with the day-to-day, -day, and that is completely and utterly false. And they can prove that that is utterly false, and that is why Rupert Murdoch will now testify as the second witness that Dominion intends to call on Monday or Tuesday, and we will not be able to watch that. The other uh, po portion of the sanction that was placed on Fox had to do with withholding evidence with regard to these phone calls that the producer, who's now suing them, was recording. And this is a key one, and we only heard two, and the two were offered, like proffered, to the court as uh, proof that she had these recordings. And uh, the second one has to do with her. I believe this is her. I think this is Abby Grossberg, because it doesn't sound like Maria Bartiromo. The other call between somebody and Rudy Giuliani uh, sounds like Maria Bartiromo, and it's uh, been characterized as being Maria Bartiromo, talking to Rudy, saying to Rudy, do you have any evidence that you've been presenting in court that you could show our audience that you've been presenting? And he said, I'll give you what I got. And she left it there. The next thing she said was, what about the software? Do you have any evidence that the software was flipping votes? And he said, there's a county that's been triple counted in Michigan. That was a lie. And then uh, she asked, could he, um, could he confirm that Nancy Pelosi is somehow involved with Dominion? And he said he couldn't prove that. Okay. This is the second phone call that Abby Grossberg offered to the court. And in this phone call, I believe it's her speaking to the lawyers for the Trump campaign and asking the lawyers for the Trump campaign on December 8th or December 6th, 2020, uh, whether or not um, the audit of the count matched the results on election day. And the lawyer says, yeah, it did. Are any of the machines, I know it was on War Room the other day with Steve Bannon, have any of the machines been looked at? He had said that one was looked at in Georgia. Uh, I'd have to check on that in terms of Georgia. I know during the audit they did check on those machines. Um, they're really, you know, the, the, if we just go off the record for one sec here. Yeah, Chip Clark. Um, <laughs> I, I, want, I don't want us to say it if it's not. That's why we're yeah, checking. I would, I would, I would, I think they have looked at the machines. Um, when, the, when the Secretary of State did its audit, uh, there, there was a lot, of, I think, a fair bit of looking at the machines. Um, you know, the audit came in pretty darn close to what the machine count was huh. with the receipts. So, you know, I don't know the outcome of those, but our understanding, again, this is from the Secretary of State's office, was that there weren't any physical issues with machines on those inspections. Again, that was on December 5th, 2020. Trump campaign officials saying there weren't any physical issues with Dominion voting machines. There's a fair bit of looking at those machines, Miss Bartiromo, but all the figures were pretty darn close to what they were supposed to be. So that's not Maria Bartiromo from what I can deduce for myself. Um, but it it is obviously, you know, the producer for Maria Bartiromo at the time, Abby Grossberg, recording herself telling the Trump lawyer that they're going off the record, but she doesn't turn the recorder off at all. She doesn't go off the record. Asking him, was there any difference in the audit count as there was on Election Day? And he said no. And they still told that lie. He said that he had spoken to Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, that's who he's talking about, in Georgia. And that they did an audit of the machine count in Georgia. And the audit of the machine count in Georgia matched the Election Day mach uh, machine count in Georgia. That there was no fraud, that there was no vote flipping, there was no discrepancy, it was pretty much in line, it was almost identical, whatever. And they still told this lie. So that's what goes to court. 
on Monday. And we don't get to see it, which I think is such a disservice to Americans who still believe, for whatever reason, what Fox tells them. I I don't know what it's going to take. At RandyRhodes.com. Go go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Because here was Trump on the same day, December 5th, 2020. In one Michigan county using Dominion voting systems, nearly 6,000 votes were discovered that were wrongly switched from Trump to Biden. They called it a glitch. You know, a glitch, that's like the machine broke. Numerous times we found glitches, and every single time the glitch went 100 percent to Biden and no percent to Trump. The same systems are used in 30 states. Okay, that, that, so this, you know, this, this drop here. I no. watched it on TV. That's a real caller to this show, okay? And the idea that she watches that swill on TV and thinks that they would never lie to her on the TV is the exact reason why this trial needs to be on the TV. Because while I sit here and, and rack my brain about what's it going to take to convince the dead enders and the, and, and the people who still say things like, uh, you know, the election was rigged or whatever, the thing that needs to happen, the thing that would actually go a long way to ending this madness is to have this trial happen on the TV. But it's not going to happen on the TV. And so, you you know, Tucker Carlson and Lou Dobbs and Maria Baradaromo and, uh, you know, uh, Rudy Giuliani, and I I don't know if they're going to call them my pillow guy. I have no idea uh, what their witness list looks like. The only witness that I know for sure will be called in the first or second day is Rupert Murdoch, because that was leaked by an anonymous source, uh, that he would be witness number two for Dominion. And that's all the information we have on Dominion's witness list. And this particular trial is so important to the writing of such wrongs that still occur on that fake channel that it just boggles the mind that there is no need or desire or wish to have it on the TV where people could be disabused of the notion that this past, that the election of uh, 2020 was somehow rigged or fraudulent or whatever. Now, Donald Trump has raised an, an extraordinary amount of money off of this big lie, and that's why he continues to use it because it benefits him. It benefits his pocketbook. It benefits his, uh, you know, campaign monies. It benefits, you know, him. It it totally hurts this country much more than, uh, you know, the kid in the Discord chat room hurt this country. And yet the kid in the Discord chat room was, uh, I mean, did you see the, 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 the amount of military uh, equipment that was placed on, uh, on his lawn in order to arrest him? A kid in bad basketball trunks uh, who obviously could not have had the kind of clearance that one would need to access the kind of information that he had and was able to put on a gamer channel over a period of many many months okay there it just it boggles the mind okay but that kid did you see they they they, they literally brought a bear cat on his lawn they, it's it's a tank they brought a ta- there was a guy in a turret in a turret in a tank on that kid's lawn today. There were several guys with uh, semi-automatic uh, weapons, military long rifles. They made him put his hands on his head and walk backwards in his bad outfit and his ridiculous brown shoes and black socks with a red basketball and a great, oh my God, this kid has no life, no life whatsoever. But he was arrested because it was alleged in an indictment that he damaged the national security of the United States of America by doing what he did. And yet Donald Trump, Donald Trump just walks around and gets to take the fifth in civil cases. Donald Trump gets to raise millions of dollars off of this lie and does such damage, such damage to, to the United States by making people believe garbage, falsehoods, making people think that their country 
is 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 fraudulent and that we elected a president fraudulently and that Biden isn't legitimately the president of the United States and and everything that's going on in this country is is some facade it's some it's some you know fantasy and it was all done by Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden cuz Joe Biden was in a basement i mean it's just it's crazy it's it's crazy that nothing happens on uh, uh, to that man's little comb over and this this 21 year old who obviously has issues, was arrested by the, by, by the FBI wearing tactical gear in a tank. In a tank. I don't know. I just, I can't square these things in my head because, you know, <laughs> it's just so unequal right in front of your face. It's just so unequal. And you know what's crazy? There is a multi-tiered, it's not two-tiered, it's a multi-tiered justice system in this country, and everybody who has money knows it, and everybody who doesn't have money knows it. It's the people that will never get in trouble, God love you, that don't know the extent to which this justice system is not just, right? But these are the greatest cases to show in order for people to get their brains wrapped around that. And yet, the right wing is going to invert it. The right wing is going to say that we have a two-tier justice system that's prejudiced against the rich white guy who was president of the United States. That the justice system in this country is unfair to him, which is hysterical. That there's even one taker for that argument, and there are millions of them who take that argument and actually own it and adopt it and process it as that's the lay of the land. This is why they can't orient themselves. This is why they can't solve their own problems because this is what they think of, of, of the justice system and that, that it's prejudiced against a billionaire or supposed billionaire white guy who owns an enormous number of properties in the most expensive city in the world. Okay. That said, moving on. So now we have uh, the case of, of the, the, the Amarillo judge, the one single federal district court judge for the entire northern district of Texas deciding for the rest of the United States whether or not an FDA-approved drug that's been on the market with FDA approval for almost 25 years now was fraudulently, yeah, fraudulently approved by the FDA 23 years ago. And he says, yes, it was. Yes, it was. And I want it taken off the market. And the whole court system has to react to him inserting himself in place of the Federal Food and Drug Administration and all of its many doctors, and a four-year deep dive into the efficacy and safety of Mifepristone conducted back in the 90s, and before that, in use since the 80s in Europe. But because this particular wackadoodle made it, by virtue of Donald Trump appointing him, to the federal district court in northern Texas, and he's the only federal district court judge in northern Texas, and people could go judge shopping for him and did, he's able to say, I don't want it on the market anymore, and I'm going to find some twisted reasoning and apply it to that and affect every woman, every single woman in the United States of America. Now the court has to move so swiftly with the speed and swiftness. Uh. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Let's start with the big picture. The pill used in more than half of abortions in the United States does remain legal and available for now, but there are several new limitations. A federal appeals court stepping in overnight to impose tighter rules. This would limit the use of the abortion drug Mifepristone, allowing it to be used up to seven weeks of pregnancy instead of 10 weeks, and deciding that Mifepristone can no longer be sent in the mail. Now, this appeals court weighing in after conflicting rulings from federal judges about whether the abortion drug 
should be banned. But Democratic led states not waiting for that to come down, wasting no time taking matters into their own hands to stockpile the abortion drug. Washington state, for instance, bought enough for a three year supply in that state. Mm -hmm. This morning, the Biden administration reacting to this ruling, saying that they will continue to fight this in the courts. We could see this make its way all the way up to the Supreme Court nearly one year after the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. It will make its way to the Supreme Court. I don't know why people are saying it could. It will. It has to because you have dueling courts. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals split the baby, which they had no business doing. OK, uh, the idea that they said, oh, well, the statute of limitations did run. Thank you on the 2000 FDA approval of Mifepristone. But we think we found a way in in, in 2016. Let's all do the math, shall we? In 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. That's seven years, according to my fingers there. The statute of limitations has run on this particular thing, too. But they said in 2016, the FDA actually extended the period of time when a woman might find that uh, mifepristone is efficacious and also safe, right? And so we can now extend the use of that drug up to the 10th week of incubation, right? The 10th week. And uh, women for seven years have been using mifepristone through the 10th week, and nothing has happened, okay? We told you that the mortality rate from mifepristone is less than Tylenol. It's less than Viagra. It's less than penicillin, okay? It's, it's like 0.001% of people have, uh, uh, you know, die from mifepristone. Okay, but they said 2016. Okay, maybe we could squeeze this uh, decision in and we can roll it back, roll it back to seven weeks. This is what the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals did. So they did that today. And then um, because they couldn't take away the FDA approval, which was uh, in 2000. And then they said, okay, recently, uh, the FDA actually approved telemedicine as a way for a woman to consult with a a doctor or, you know, we now have these nurse practitioners who are magical, right? And they can write prescriptions and you can use Teladoc, which, you know, the Trump administration was very big on getting us to do, right? Teladoc. They thought it was uh, fantastically new. I don't know. He also thinks Frederick Douglass is alive. But yeah, he thought uh, the telemedicine was a brand new thing. But they said, the FDA did, that you can use telemedicine uh, to have a consultation, get a prescription, and the prescription could be mailed to you. And the Fifth Circuit said, oh no, oh no, oh no, no, oh hell no, there will be no mailing. That's the Comstock Act, okay? Then on the other side, you've got the Washington court the, in the state of Washington saying, leave the status quo alone. Leave it alone for now, let the Supreme Court. So you have all of this contretemps. Meantime, there's total chaos in the United States, total chaos. Because according to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, women now have to personally go to the doctor, and not one time, not two times, but three times. What are they? They're all rabbis now? You have to ask the question three times? Okay, like 1% of the audience got that. Because <laughs> unless you're a Jew, you don't understand that, you know, rabbis make you, if you, want, if you wanted to convert to Judaism, just so you know, you have to ask the rabbi three separate times to help you convert to Judaism from any other religion, okay? It's, it's the way we are. What, what, are they, what does the rabbi say on the first and second? Are they like, no, get out of here, never? Or are they like, come back and ask me two more times? Pretty much two more times. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much it's a, you know, come back and, uh, you know, show me that you're committed to this. Okay, come back one more time and show me that you really care about your soul. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a three-time thing. But anyway, that's what you now have to do with the doctor. You have to go three times. It's insane because, you know, you've got women who don't live anywhere near a doctor. And then you have women who live in a city and to get an appointment with the doctor, you know, it takes a while to get in. How many of you have tried to get an appointment with your doctor and told, okay, our next, what is today, uh, April 12th, um, April 13th? Uh, we could see you May 6th. I got one appointment at 3 o'clock. Do you want it? Well, I have to work. Do you want it? Do you have anything in the morning? Uh, let me look. Uh, June 4th. How's that? 
Well, I'm, I'm, I'm like dying over here. Well, then go to the emergency room. You see what I mean? So this is what they rule. So, of course, uh, Merrick Garland and the Department of Justice, not only did Merrick Garland have to come out and do a little dog and pony show about the 21-year-old kid and say, okay, we took him in without incident. All right, everybody happy? Bye-bye. Got work to do. He now has to write, he did write, an emergency request to the Supreme Court to ask them to hear it today, tomorrow, at the very latest, because... The Amarillo, Texas judge stayed his own opinion until when? When, everybody? Right. Tomorrow. Tomorrow at midnight. So the Supreme Court has to weigh in or else everybody's in chaos. Everybody. So what tier of the justice system do we put this in? (laughs) We got got the 21-year-old that has a tank on his lawn. Okay, we got the ex-president of the United States also damaging national security through the Ukraine phone call and the extortion of that country through the big lie and making one American not trust another American uh, because he demands ultra loyalty uh, based on lies and, 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 you know, give him money and... Oh my God! And and then you've got the uh, uh, the the guy, a lone dude, in Amarillo, Texas, appointed by Donald Trump, throwing every woman in the United States of America into complete and utter chaos. What tier does that fall on? So. This is where we are. You still have access to the drug. It's just going to be harder to get. You're going to have to uh, jump through more hoops to get it. Jump, and that's everybody. because of the way the district court actually fixed that ruling last Friday. Fixed he not it. only invalidated the original approval of that drug that dates back 23 years ago, oh he God. also invalidated a bunch of loosening of the restrictions that the FDA put in place. For instance, during COVID, it said you don't have to come in person to get the drug. You can get it through the mail. And that's what the Court of Appeals, the Fifth Circuit, has done. It's targeted those loosening of restrictions that happened post-2016 about. And so the original approval, that's still good. But all the things that you could do to try to get the drug easier, that's still now blocked. That's still now blocked. Okay, everybody good? Everybody got it? Your doctor got it? Does your nurse practitioner get it? Does the teledoc uh, medicine person understand? God help us. So there's an appearance of availability, (laughs) but it's not really available. This is disgrace. I mean, to quote Trump, this is a disgrace. This is an insult to the 21st century United States of America. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. He's a very smart Putin, very smart. Now, he's had in, in probably a bad year. Don't forget, that whole thing is not if he took over all of Ukraine. And what are we going to do? Because Biden is so committed to Ukraine. Uh, this is your hero. This is your leader. This is the guy that you, I mean, what? He, America first. He, he's literally trashing America and promoting dictators and autocrats all over the world. Please see yesterday's show for why that might be. All right, Gary in Fort Lauderdale. Hello, Randy. Hello, Gary. You know, regarding that Pentagon leaker, yes. I, I didn't hear the news because I was busy this afternoon, and when I got done working, I put you on. So that's where I learned about it. Mm-hmm. But the first thing that popped into my mind is that it reminds me of Abu Ghraib in a way, because it's so easy to grab that low-hanging fruit. Uh, You know, Trump can get away with not paying taxes and not getting audited and committing all these crimes. There's mountains of evidence. What happens to him? He's out playing golf and running around Mar-a-Lago. And this kid, I guess he said he's a 21-year-old kid that doesn't dress very well. No, God. (laughs) He gets, he gets, what? grabbed by somebody with an armored vehicle and automatic weapons, and he might not even be the right guy. Yeah, I mean, he's he's obviously the person who is posting these things. I oh. mean, there's no doubt that that's what he did, but 
the idea that he had access to these things by himself or that, you know, he was able to copy these things and get these things. At, I mean, you know, listen, the, the idea that there's a need to know in the military and that compartmentalized intelligence is just that. And that his friends in that chat room were saying, oh, first it was all about Ukraine, Russia and Ukraine. And then it became about all different things. And it became about signals intelligence and spying on our allies like uh, South Korea, uh, et cetera. And Israel is in there, too, you know, where yeah. I honestly, what is what is this kid in the Massachusetts Air National Guard got access to? And we're supposed to believe that. But yeah, yeah. yeah right? it's hard to believe. You know, I never saw this movie. I was only told about it. But apparently there's a movie that was out years ago called War Games. Oh, it's a great movie. <laughs> I never saw it. This sounds like it could be something like that. Yeah, War Games is good. It's uh, Matthew Broderick. It's, uh, it's, Do you want to play a game? <laughs> That's it. Yeah, you should watch it. I mean, it's probably dated. I haven't seen it in a really long time, but I remember loving it when it first uh, happened, when it first came out. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is like Abu Ghraib. Abu Ghraib, remember, for those of you who need a little memory jog, seven low-ranking reservists went to jail to Leavenworth. Leavenworth, for 10 years, they got 10-year sentences for the torture of the uh, prisoners at the Abu Ghraib prison in uh, Iraq. And it turns out that they were instructed by little green men, you know, by guys who were... Uh, posing as, you know, CIA, but they really were just contractors. So, yeah, Ron DeSantis. Right, they were Ron DeSantis. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, they're the ones that took the fall. They're the ones that got the rap. They're the ones that uh, actually went to prison, and, uh, you know, it was all ordered by Ashcroft, okay? Uh, not Ashcroft, uh, uh, Rumsfeld. Rumsfeld, yeah, yeah. I'm getting my evil dictators, my evil, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting them confused. Rumsfeld's dead, so he can't defend himself. So, uh, But it was Rumsfeld that signed the, the uh, memo that was hanging on the wall there telling them to do these things. And then the contractors came in and uh, made themselves uh, appear as if they were, you know, like special forces or CIA or intelligence operators, NSA guys. And they, they were contractors. They were working for private industry, right? So like the Wagner Group, basically. What do you think of this, this Ukrainian soldier having his head cut off? Did you hear about that? I did. There's two of them, actually. Yes. And, and, and uh, we're trying, I mean, the Ukrainians are saying, oh, listen, these, these tapes are real. Uh, the rest of the world's trying to, you know, uh, authenticate these tapes as being real. Uh, but the brutality of a scorched earth policy which is what russia is deploying in ukraine in bakhmut in that yeah, with uh, the help of china and the wagner group yeah which is worldwide okay now they're in haiti now they're in uh, kenya they're in i mean they're all over the, the this Prigozhin guy who we had a chance at with the Mueller report right uh and and everybody decided it was all fake there was no reason to know his name or what he did or the troll farm and say none of it happened and now this guy is the guy and that these prisoners who are now uh, conscripts for the Wagner group are beheading people, I just want you to understand that that is a preferred method of some of these guys because they were fighters in Chechnya, okay? And, and this is their way. Beheading is a thing in Muslim societies, and Chechnya is a Muslim society. Well, we remember what happened over in uh, in, in 2001 in uh, Iraq and Iran and not Iran, Iraq and Afghanistan with the Taliban. Yeah, no, I'm saying beheading is a thing. It is yeah. right. And so, why is everybody surprised that Wagner conscripts who come from Chechnya uh, think beheading is a thing and that they could do it? You know, I I, I don't know why people are so surprised. Did you, have, you, by chance you have read Syrian the dialogue? Fi you have Syrian fighters there. You have Chechen fighters there. All all conscripts for the Wagner Group. Okay, that's he 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 literally finds the the lowest of the low, the nastiest of the nasty. Some of them are what, criminals. You know, yes, and he uh you know he he conscripts them. He he you know gets them into his paid militias. Did you by any chance read any of the dialogue? of the other soldiers that were egging the killer on? No, why? Oh, my God. They were talking about using the knife and cutting through the spine, and they were putting the guy down for, what's the matter? Haven't you ever cut a head off before? That's what I'm telling you. They know how to cut a head exactly. off. Exactly. Like it wasn't the... 
So uh, what I did here was uh, one uh, reporter, I, I refuse to actually do a deep dive into this because I've seen too much already in my, uh, my, in my, in my, in my life. Uh, I don't need to see another beheading. But I, I remember when these uh, Al-Qaeda tapes and the ISIS tapes were all over the place, okay? And I did see some of them, and they are just brutal and disgusting. But in this particular tape of the Ukrainian soldier, he's alive because you can hear him. I didn't hear that. Yeah, I heard that. I, and I didn't see it. I, I won't watch it. But I heard through a, 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 a war reporter, a, 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 you know, a real one, who watched the tape. I think it was, uh, I forget his name. He's, he works for CNN. Uh, God, I'm just blanking out on his name. And I really shouldn't because guy is freaking brave. And he's been doing this for years now. He said that he saw the tape and that the Ukrainian soldier was still alive while they were beheading him. Well, they were all alive when they were... David Pearl and all of them were alive yes, when they did it. that's what I saw. Or put him in a cage and throw him in the water. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, how bad can you get? It's, it's war crimes. And, and until and unless the world gets serious about war crimes and war criminals and, and, uh, and one, you know, Geneva Convention for all, and everybody, you know, uh, it's hard to believe that there are rules of war, but there are, and they have to do with, you know, civilians, and they have to do with kindergartens, and they have to do with maternity hospitals, and they have to do with beheadings, and they have to do with, you know... Uh, uh, the Schools and movies. And, and rape, yes. Everything. Right. And, and, and less than until, you know, people absolutely say, you know, we need another Nuremberg trial. We need another, uh, you know, uh, Hague trial. We need we have to actually start, uh, you know, looking at the issue of war in the first place and the failure of leadership in this world that actually allows war to be something that happens instead of, you know, negotiating and negotiating and doing, you know, sanctions and and depriving billionaires of their gravy train of money. Right. I mean, make them pay for the disagreement instead of, you know, 19 year old kids. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't know what they're doing. They don't. They're doing what they're told to do. The kids. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but but the, the, the billionaires, the oligarchs, the, oh, the they know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. Progosia knows what There's he's doing. Never Putin enough. knows what he's doing. Right. It's never enough. Never, never enough. ever enough. Right. And uh, we continue to buy into that. You know, you can't disturb business. You can't disturb it. Right. And as long as we continue to buy into that as a theory of uh, self-governing around the world, then this is the result. And it's going to be the same over and over and over again. People want to scream and yell about war and blah, blah, blah. OK, scream and yell about war and blah, blah, blah. And attack me. Attack me for actually saying that people have the right to self-defense and the right to self-determination and not holding accountable the oligarchs who literally are profiting in places that invade other places and not holding the, the the money to leet accountable i'm sorry there's going to be war it's just inevitable yep it's an obvious conclusion thanks gary oh i forgot to ask gary you know they had 20 inches of rain in broward yesterday fort lauderdale airport is still closed because it's underwater i'm sitting here just a couple miles up the road listening to a thunder right now <laughs> But, uh, yeah, Fort Lauderdale's in bad shape. It got flooded really bad. It was like somebody turned the faucet on and didn't turn it off, and the whole place overflowed. But there's no such thing as global warming or climate change. Mary had a little man. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Growing outrage over Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas and his financial ties to a real estate mogul. Public records obtained by the nonprofit journalism outlet ProPublica appear to show billionaire Harlan Crow purchased three properties in Savannah, Georgia from the Thomas family in 2014. Oh Among them, the single story home where Thomas's mother had been living and where the conservative justice spent part of his childhood. That is the worst place I've ever lived. My all-encompassing word is gross, I mean, it was putrid. Crow reportedly paying over $133,000 for the home and two <laughs> vacant lots, 
significantly more than ProPublica reports for other properties that Crow purchased on the same block. Just $40,000 for a pair of buildings bought a year earlier. In a statement to ABC News, Crow said the properties were bought at a market rate with the intention to one day create a public museum at the Thomas home <laughs> dedicated to telling the story of our nation's second black Supreme Court justice. <laughs> Either way, Thomas now faces legal questions after failing to report the purchases on financial disclosure forms. Whoops. Although Supreme Court justices are not bound by any code of ethics, ah. a decades-old federal law requires disclosure of financial transactions over $1,000. Ah. That includes real estate sales. Ah. Whether or not this type of ethics violation um, is going to uh, actually result in any kind of penalty is, is a big question. This is Why? really, we're in uncharted waters here. If you were a question? normal government official, there's an entire sort of ethics infrastructure to enforce these rules. But one of the big questions here is whether anyone actually has the power to uh, enforce the law when it comes to Supreme <laughs> Court justices. Thomas's ties to Crow run deep. He's called the GOP mega donor a dear personal friend. ProPublica's earlier reporting of Crow's funding of years of luxury travel and vacations is already raising questions. The justice said in a statement last week, he was advised that this sort of personal hospitality from close personal friends who did not have business before the court was not reportable. Justice Thomas has not commented on this latest report, but congressional Democrats are already calling for an investigation. Others are calling for him to step down. Okay, I'll take both. I mean, really, well, why is it a question if somebody breaks the law and they're sitting on the Supreme Court as to whether or not you can prosecute them for breaking the law? You know, we went through this with the presidency, too, right? We went through all that, oh, well, sitting president, he could actually kill somebody. And, uh, you know, you can't indict a sitting president. Now we're finding out, oh, that extends over to the Supreme Court, too. Why? You can bribe them. You can actually uh, say, uh, I got your mother. What? Yes, I got your mother. This Harlan Crow dude, okay, we found out that Harlan Crow was paying, not only that he collects Nazi paraphernalia, and that he has a garden of evil where he has statues of every autocrat that ever autocratted in the world, right? All over his lawn there, he's got statuary. Uh, you know, like Mao and Lenin, and uh, these, these guys really are, uh, you know, a piece of work. But anyway, this Harlan Crow guy, so now we have another name besides for the Koch brothers. One of them's dead, so we only have the Koch brother. But now we have new names. We have names of, uh, of donors. We have names of people who have been purchasing our government, have been purchasing our Supreme Court, have been purchasing the presidency, have been purchasing... Uh, the House of Representatives and the Senate. So now we have some names. That Hold that in your head for a minute, okay? We'll come back to what to do now that we know the names. All right, so the, the, the scheme here was exactly what Sheldon Whitehouse said, but we didn't have names. It was dark money, remember? It was dark money that was, uh, you know, capturing the court, that was corrupting the court. Something was rotten at the court. Everybody understood who was, you know, a fair arbiter of what we were seeing Starting with, uh, you know, Mitch McConnell holding Merrick Garland's seat open for 11 stinking months because Obama should not be able to appoint a Supreme Court justice with only one year left in his term. But Amy Coney Barrett could be put on the Supreme Court with like eight weeks to the election. Okay, so we know something was rotten. We understood that something was rotten. And now we see that the name of the person who actually purchased for himself uh, one Justice Clarence Thomas is Harlan Crow, because we found out that he has been giving uh, Ginny and Clarence more than triple Clarence's annual income in vacation activities. He's been giving Clarence Thomas more than three times what Clarence Thomas makes off of our dime. Yes, we pay him off of our dime as a Supreme Court justice in vacations, in super yacht trips around Europe, in, uh, you know, stays at his, uh, you know, compound in uh, upstate New York, in, uh, you know, uh, uh, all kinds of travel, all kinds of luxury, all kinds. And now we're finding out that he actually purchased Clarence Thomas's mother's house, and she's 94 years old today, still alive, and still living in the house that Harlan Crow purchased. Uh, I don't know what that video of Clarence saying that was the most gross place I ever lived. It was putrid because the, the photo that they showed has absolutely nothing to do with the house that Clarence Thomas was 
apparently raised in. First of all, he was raised in his mother's house for a little while, and then he moved to grandpa's house, right? He actually wrote a book about it, my, my grandfather's son or some weird familial, uh, you know, thing. But that photo has nothing to do with the house that I just saw in the purchase uh, report, right? Anyway, the purchase now puts Clarence Thomas in an interesting and unusual position, okay? Because there is one law that applies to Supreme Court justices, just one. There's just the one. You know, every other court uh, has ethics rules. Every other court has conflict of interest rules, meaning that if somebody supports organizations or somebody actually gives money to organizations or is in charge of organizations or has business in front of the court through those organizations or themselves— if they have business in front of the court in any way, shape, or form, you know, you're supposed to recuse yourself. But Clarence can't find that in writing, so he doesn't recuse himself when indeed there is, le- you know, a, a, a live case in front of him having to do with his own stinking wife. Okay, so we can't really expect much from him. But the law is so lacking in this arena, but there is one. There is one law. And the law has to do with oh, real estate. Isn't that something? Now, you may or may not remember that Harlan Crow inherited a real estate business from his daddy, okay? And that's how Harlan Crow became so freaking rich, but he's a real estate magnat, just like Trump inherited from his father, right? And his sons will inherit from him. This is old real estate money. And Harlan Crow owns a real estate empire, and so, of course, it was probably a natural idea for him to say, hey, you know, I know a good way where I could put money in your pocket and take care of your mother for you, which is just so bizarre. And so he bought the house that Clarence Thomas said was so gross and so putrid for $133,000, and he bought two other lots, empty lots, on the block. And one of those uh, uh, lots he built a house on Okay, Harlan Crow built a house on it, a, a nice two-story contemporary house, and gave it to a police officer to live in. So Clarence Thomas's mother is living in a house where Harlan Crow is her landlord. We don't know if she pays rent to him or not, or if he gives her a free ride. We don't know. Uh, Clarence Thomas was by law required to report any real estate transaction over $1,000 that doesn't include his primary residence. This is not his primary residence. This is his mother's primary residence. And the two empty lots, which Clarence Thomas, in previous disclosures in the 1980s and in the 1990s, disclosed he owned a one-third share in, split between him, his brother, and his mother. Well, now his brother is dead. Sorry about that, Clarence. And uh, Harlan goes and buys this and the lots, subsequently sells the lots. Clarence never reports any of this, and it's the one law that he needs to comply with. It's a post-Watergate law that requires justices and other officials, but justices, to disclose details of real estate transactions over $1,000 that do not include their primary residence. Now, previously, he did. Now, he doesn't. Why would that be? All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Okay, this is a flashback. This is from 2020. 2020. Uh, and this is my, um, the guy that I hope to meet in heaven one day, uh, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, telling you something's really rotten at the Supreme Court. There is increasing evidence that something is rotten across that lawn and across First Street at the United States Supreme Court. What is the evidence of that? Well, the first thing I would suggest is the amount of anonymous, dark money influencers swirling around the court. I have spent a good deal of my professional life around appellate courts. I have never seen, nor does the history of the Supreme Court evidence anything like what is taking place right now with dark money influencers swirling like eels around that court. How do they do it? 
Well, they're involved in the selection process oh. through a group called the Federalist Society, which takes large anonymous dark money contributions and controls the selection of judges. How do we know it controls the selection of judges? Donald Trump has said so. <laughs> the Wall Street Journal has said this was a subcontracting operation, a subcontracting operation, and it worked. It is not a good thing when the selection of our Supreme Court is subcontracted out to a private group that then takes multi-million dollar anonymous donations. It shouldn't be hard for members to understand that that is a dangerous set of facts. Then you go on to the campaigns for those selected nominees and you see more anonymous donors writing checks for as much as $17 million. Oh. I can't write a check for $17 million. I don't know anybody here who can. The number of donors who can write a check for $17 million is very small. And now we're starting to know. And the number who would know. want to is even smaller. Yeah. And so it's not a big pool that, uh, you know, uh, the money swims in. And now we're starting to have names that actually represent the people who can and want to write checks to own, to own Supreme Court justices, to have them in their pocket, a la the godfather, okay? I mean, it's so unbelievable. And, and, and they're buying their mother's houses. They're literally, they're becoming the, the Supreme Court justice's mother's landlord of their elderly man. It's like that scene in Goodfellas where he goes, uh, you know, I told you not to buy anything. I told you not to buy anything. Oh, but, but I bought it in my mother's name. I bought that, she loves that car. Pink Cadillac, remember that? And he said, oh, well, I told you not to go out and buy anything. Well, so, you know, but it's in my mother's name. This is what they do. This is how the money gets uh, funneled through. This is so disgusting. This is so uh, heinous. And if it wasn't for independent journalism like ProPublica, we wouldn't know a damn thing about it because not only is it done on the slide, but there's very little in the law to hold anybody accountable for taking bribes on the Supreme Court. The only one law that we have is the one that applies to real estate, not your primary residence. And they managed to break that law, too. They managed to actually do it. And ProPublica was, you know, was able to actually, uh, it was a kid, it was a bunch of kids. Oh, well, they're not kids. Justin Elliott, Josh Kaplan, and Alex Majerski uh, actually worked very long on these uh, pages to report to you that Harlan Crow not only paid for the, the vacation activities that were three times the amount that Clarence Thomas makes in a year, and these are yearly vacations that he, uh, you know, is, is uh, making available to Clarence, uh, Harlan Crow is, but that they're also involved in, in buying, uh, you know, uh, his mother's house and some vacant lots on the block and then building a house on one of the vacant lots and having a police officer live in that house to protect Clarence's mother. From what? From what in Savannah, Georgia? What are you protecting? I guess they knew that one day somebody would find out the name of the person on the deed. Somebody would find out the name of the person who purchased uh, Clarence Thomas's mother's house while she's still alive. And she's still alive. Okay, she's 94. She still lives in that house. Uh, and they would say the name out loud, and, uh, you know, apparently uh, people might show up and want to protest, peacefully, of course, but might want to show up and protest. Uh, and so they put a police officer right down the street. Isn't that special? So Harlan Crow bought a string of properties on a very quiet residential street in Savannah, Georgia, and is now... Justice Clarence Thomas's mother's landlord. Now, you know, what, what, what does that uh, sound like? I got mom, better, you know, rule for my uh, friend, better, better, you know. And here's why it's so unbelievable today. Because today, all eyes are on the, yes, the Supreme Court. 
All eyes are on the Supreme Court today. Why are all eyes on the Supreme Court today? Because today is the deadline for the one lone judge who is also a Trump appointed judge, also a, a Federalist Society judge, somebody that was handpicked and selected by the Federalist Society and by Donors Trust. And the money, uh, you know, was all pouring. And, you know, now we have like dollar amounts, the Coke industries. OK, I got dollar amounts for them. You know, all you got to do is follow the money. And and this is the point of the story is it's a path that we can follow now that has a name that has dollar amounts that has a law that's been broken. OK, well, the Koch brothers, 2021, 27 different organizations controlled by Charles Koch. Uh, and Coke Industries, okay, they spent a total of, and this is 2021, this is post-2020 election, they spent $656.8 million on political candidates. $656.8 million, and I can tell you right now that 93% of that amount was spent on politics, only 6% of that total amount went to charity, you know, their philanthropic uh, efforts, only 6%. So that is a a $524.9 million spend. Uh, And the the year before, it was similar. Uh, It was also in the $500 million range. You're talking half a billion dollars. And $639.4 million in 2020. In 2021, $656 million.8 dollars. Okay, these are the small number of names who have the ability to write $18 million checks and would want to, and would want to. And why would they need the Supreme Court? Why would they need it? And everybody's, you know, holding their breath. All the women and all the men who love these women are all holding our breath today, hoping to God, hoping to God that the Supreme Court says something about this Federalist Society judge in Amarillo who, in spite of states' rights, made law for the entirety of the United States of America, made law that attacks the authority of the Food and Drug Administration, the federal government, is literally taking away the standing and the scientific prowess of the Food and Drug Administration and taking away a woman's right to an early medical abortion. And everybody's looking at the Supremes. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Justice Alito spent over 98 pages trying and failing to justify overturning the decision protecting these rights. Overturning a decision he told the United States Senate was an important precedent of the Supreme Court. His opinion isn't persuasive to me at all. It reads as snide and cruel. But that's not going to stop these justices from trying to throw us back into an age where women aren't free to make their own choices about their own bodies and their own futures. It looks like the fix went in on that a while ago, and we just weren't told about it in the hearings. So tomorrow, the majority leader will bring before this chamber legislation to protect those rights nationwide, to protect that freedom across this country. And I'm eager to vote for it. We've got to stand against this assault on women's constitutional rights. And I hope some Republican colleagues will join us. And particularly, I hope, in the weeks and months ahead, that we can find ways to unravel the dark money scheme that has brought this court and our country closer to the brink. Because the court that dark money built, it's not done. It's not done trying to reshape America against our will to suit the extreme ideology of the right-wing billionaires behind the scheme. There is one good thing in all this darkness, and that is that the American people see this nonsense and have had enough like i said in heaven we will be together me and uh, sheldon whitehouse 
I, I, honestly, I, the, the, these clips are old. These clips are more than almost three years old at this point. Okay, and this was all known, but what we w- what we wouldn't know until now is just how far they wanted to go. Just how far back in time the Federalist Society, the conservative billionaires, uh, wanted to take this country. The rights that. Uh, that we've won over the last six decades of hard work and dedication to the principle that all of us are created equal, that there is uh, equal justice under law or there will be equal justice under law because the arc of justice, the arc of uh, law bends towards justice. And that if we just kept at it and we just kept at it and we just kept at it, we could have a real shining city on the hill of human rights. We could actually say that we did it. And these organizations and these billionaires in particular have no interest in that. They have an interest in us being barefoot and pregnant and wanting and fearful and not guaranteed the right to send our kids to school without fear to fear harm will come to us every corner we turn, every store we go into, every place that we park our car. Okay, they want us to be fearful. They want us to be inundated with responsibilities that we can't meet so that we're stressed all the time. And hey, if you start self-medicating, even better, even better, even better, because they want to run it all. And government has been an impediment, as it should be. Government is the guarantor of democracy, right? And they don't like it. They don't like it one damn bit. And you can just look at everything that we've seen in the last, oh, I don't know, week or two. The expulsion of the two Tennessee Democrats, the two black Tennessee Democrats, and the non-expulsion of the one white Tennessee Democrat was a, it was, it, it was more than a dog whistle. It was the bullhorn that they accused the two Democrats of using to signal that they will re- reverse uh, everything back to Jim Crow era times, that they were willing to do that. They were willing to go there, thus striking fear into the heart of every decent uh, Tennessean, every decent American in this country, because it was a two for that signal. That that signal was telling you two things. It was telling you Jim Crow is back, and that if we don't like your choice, we don't like who you elected, then we will simply nullify the results of the election. We will just go back and remove those people because we now have a supermajority thanks to all this dark money, right? And so we will undo two elections just to show you that we will do it and we can do it and who we will be targeting, okay? Then in Texas, you have Abbott, the governor of Texas, saying two things, also two things. One thing is that he's saying the prosecutor who prosecuted the guy who killed the Black Lives Matter protester, okay, who killed him, who got in his car after posting on social media that he just might kill some people today on his way to work and actually does do it. Uh, The guy that he drove his car into was also armed because, hey, it's Texas. Well, Abbott didn't like the result of that, uh, that, that gunfight. He wasn't happy with the result of it. Well, jury said the guy who chose to drive his car into the crowd in the first place provoked this violence and he was responsible uh, for making the other guy stand his ground. And they found that the guy who drove his car into the Black Lives Matter protesters, and everybody in this scenario is white, just so you know. But because Abbott didn't like the fact that the Black Lives protester was the one who ended up dead and the one who attacked the Black Lives Matter protester was the one that ended up in jail, uh, being convicted by a jury of his peers for murder, Abbott did two things. He said, I'm going to nullify that jury. Just like they said in Tennessee, I'm going to nullify the election. He said, I'm going to nullify that jury. I'm going to pardon this guy before they even sentence him, okay? Because I want to signal to you that if you murder people that I like, I will pardon you. So murder in Texas is now okay as long as you murder a guy that the governor of Texas uh, likes. And if they should find you guilty, he'll nullify the jury's uh, verdict for you. He will. So we had that. 
Now we have uh, an attack on the Food and Drug Administration, a, 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 a federal agency that is science-y and medicine-y and uh, actually looks out for the safety and efficacy of uh, various drugs that it actually... This goes back to the COVID era. Believe me, it does. Okay, this is the anti-vax movement on steroids, and the Republicans are exploiting it, and uh, it also does two things. Not only does it say that a federal agency is going to be defanged and questioned and called into question, and that if they approve drugs that we don't like or they approve drugs that do things that we think prolong the wrong lives will nullify that approval too and will punish women first we'll punish women first so everybody's looking at a, a, a bought and paid for tainted supreme court to fix this and it's a joke and now you understand why they wanted the supreme court so damn bad and this is just what happened in this week okay if you want to go back to you know, like everything that happened in the last couple months, well, then you have to realize they're banning books. They're shutting down libraries. They're telling people what they can read. They're telling people what they can learn. You will not teach uh, the racial history of the United States of America anywhere. You will not do it. And if you do it, we will take over your college. We will literally fire every person that's uh, on the school board, and we will appoint people to be on the school board. You know, another story that went under the radar is the one about Mississippi and Jackson, Mississippi, who just got done with a water crisis. Okay, tainted water there. And uh, the Mississippi state legislature, also supermajority, just decided that policing in Jackson should be done by the feds. By Not the feds, but by the state. Not local police officers, but by the state. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Is this corruption? Is this criminal? Uh, Explain it. Well, it's for sure corruption, as the founding fathers would have defined that term. Uh, I first noticed it when I was looking at why Republicans at all evaporated on climate change. When I got to the Senate, there were Republicans working on climate change. As soon as Citizens United was decided, as soon as the dark money flowed in huge denominations after that decision, they all stopped. You couldn't get a Republican near a climate bill. And so I began to look at that apparatus that was pushing climate denial, that dark money apparatus. And then I began to see that it's a lot of the same groups that are backing the Republicans, just like uh, we described in the billion dollars in this election for Republican Senate candidates. And then as I looked at the Supreme Court, I began to see the same groups showing up there in the effort to pack the court, in the effort to make sure that Garland did not get on the court Mm. and that Gorsuch and Kavanaugh and Barrett did get on the court. And all of the machinations that we had to live through in the Senate as they rammed uh, those judges through against all sorts of Senate precedents and uh, traditions and rules. So this book is about the, the way that the dark money effort, that apparatus, over time and with over half a billion dollars, mm. actually has packed uh, the Supreme Court, captured it the way the old railroad barons would have captured a like 19th century railroad commission. Right. And, it, and that's exactly what it is. They want to go back to the 19th century. That's why when you see these Supreme Court decisions, they go back to 1839 or they go back to uh, one of them, the Roe v. Wade. Where did Roe v. Wade, uh, not Roe v. Wade, where did the Dobbs decision actually originate? It originated in Mississippi. These are, this is where dark money actually goes in order to bring cases that will go all the way up through the Supreme Court so that they can have their way with you. Right. And, and and it's all about that. That's what the money wants. The money wants to turn back the clock. The money wants to go back to the days of the robber barons. The money wants to go back to the days where people, you know, owned people, where people were not free, where people weren't able to make choices, where people weren't able to move freely about the country, where people weren't able to read People didn't. I mean, and if they did read, the newspapers were completely owned. I mean, you had the the William Randolph Hearst. I mean, they made uh, you know movies about these guys. And um, what's interesting about Citizen Kane, the story of William Randolph Hearst and how how you know just completely insane he was, is he also collected 
He also collected, but he didn't collect things because he loved the things. He collected things because that's what you did, right? And and it drove him crazy that he couldn't appreciate the art that he was collecting. I mean, it's just such a it's such a repetitive story. And every time we make progress, there's they, they want to go back, but this time they're going extreme. This time they're going way the f back. They want to go back a, 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 a century. Okay, they want to be the landowners, hence the real estate ma- magnets, uh, the railroads. We all know what goes on. I mean, we're sitting here watching the railroads go, uh, you know, have derailments like every single day. Who knew? Who knew? Until East Palestine, Ohio uh, actually was put out of their own houses and they uh, said something about it. Then all of a sudden everybody started realizing, oh my God, these trains go off the rails all the time. You really only have one crew member or sometimes two on a train that's two or three miles long? Really? Yeah, really. And they're carrying hazardous materials? Yes. Well, why don't we, uh, you know, make rules at least for the hazardous materials? Well, we tried, but they were undone. And they said, well, if the whole train isn't hazardous material and it's just like 10 or 15 cars, you don't have to apply the hazardous materials rules to that particular train. You know what I'm saying? And this is what the billionaires want, this precision railroading, you know, to to make it efficient and cost cut and not have real human beings on board to steer the train away from trouble, right? And so you have the media owned by, you know, Rupert Murdoch and and you have the NRA trying to put guns in everybody's hands so we could just kill each other and get it over with. And you have polluters, you know, the oil and gas industry, the Koch brothers, you know, just wanting to dump in your and God help you if, uh, you know, uh, your water gets tainted. Right. They're not coming to get you anymore. They're just not into it. They're not that into you. That's what the money wants, and that's what the money is for, and that's what they're doing. And so if they don't like, at long last, the choice that you made for your state legislature especially, which is where all this uh, real evil stuff is going on, look, Florida, last night at 11 o'clock at night, Ron death sentence here. He's not even here, okay? We just had a one in 1,000 year storm. You want to see? Uh, listen, I, 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 I'm going to show you something. This is, uh, there's no audio. Look at this. Uh, put this up, Brett. This is drone footage. This is far- Fort Lauderdale. This is literally Broward. This is Broward County. Look at it. Well, where's Ron death sentence? He's in Ohio, not campaigning for president. Right. Yeah. He's in Ohio campaigning for something that he won't tell us what it is. But he managed to get a bill sent to him last night at 11 o'clock at night, and he signed it. And that is an abortion ban. That is a six-week abortion ban. Okay. And in Florida, this was the last place that uh, women in the Deep South, that women in the Southeast of this country uh, could go to get help if they ended up pregnant and didn't want to be. This was the last bastion of hope. Florida was. And he passed a 15-week abortion ban that's still being litigated. It's still in the court. And before that even gets settled, before that even gets litigated, he passed another one. He passed another one. Just throw crap at the fan. Just keep on going, keep on going. It's chaos. Because in chaos, they can steal. And they could steal everything. So last night at 11 o'clock at night, without any ado, without any fanfare, without anybody really knowing it, he signed a six-week abortion ban. Can't go into place like right now because the other one isn't done being litigated. I mean, this is just such an affront and an assault on every single human being in this country. It's just, and it's, it's, it's endless. They're, they're on a, a, an extremist role, and, uh, you know, buckle up, everybody. Buckle up. Now, the only thing that's good about knowing that Clarence Thomas broke the law is that there is one law, finally, that we've identified that he could be prosecuted for. And, yes, the Attorney General of the United States has the authority to do it, to do it, right? The Attorney General has the authority to investigate for willful violations of the disclosure requirement and for merely negligent violations of the disclosure requirement. The civil fine is less, but the fact of the investigation uh, is the same. And what's important here is that this court simply refuses to subject itself to any factual inquiry or investigation. And so to have the attorney general come in and do a report that sets the facts out so that he can pursue a civil fine is very important. Setting aside the fine, it's not a big number, but the fact of an investigation is really important and potentially a spur to Chief Justice Roberts to do what he should have done all along, which is to provide a mechanism for investigating allegations 
about Supreme Court justices. Well, it seems like Roberts, um, you know, you would think he would be ashamed or embarrassed about the uh, extremism that's on his court and how it's all falling apart on his court. But you know what? He's been waiting. He's been hibernating on that court, waiting for uh, the money to send him compadres, waiting for the money to send him uh, cooperators, waiting for the money to send him crooked, dirty judges to bring the swamp to the Supreme Court. And that has happened. And the only thing that can be done about it is the prosecution of the disclosure law, the one law that applies to the Supreme Court justices, because they don't even have an ethics law. They don't have to recuse themselves. They don't have to declare themselves conflicted out of a case. It's the right thing to do, but there's no law. There's no law. There's one law, has to do with real estate, and Clarence Thomas broke it. And that's all we got going for us with regard to the Supreme Court. But I hope you understand why they needed and wanted the Supreme Court and why Roberts has absolutely uh, no embarrassment or shame about the direction this court is going in, which is to give the money everything the money wants. It's because he's been sitting there waiting for this, waiting for them to send him enough people to make a majority. And so we have got to do something about uh, either increasing the number of seats on the court or at least removing one of the dirtiest justices that we've ever seen in, in the history of the court. In the 234 years of the Supreme Court, no one has ever seen anything like Clarence Thomas. In the 234 year history of the United States Supreme Court, no member of the United States Supreme Court has ever appeared clearly to break the law right never seen it before never but we now have statements from harlan crow admitting that he did do these things that he did buy this house. and it doesn't really matter why now you're going to hear he's going to tell you because he you know if you if you read around or about it or if you listen to reporting then harlan crow's going to say oh well you know i wanted to build a museum to honor the second black supreme court justice what about the third one are we going to honor the third one uh no okay the second one though we must (laughs) did we do the first one no but the second one we must right it doesn't matter why he bought clarence thomas's mom's house and became and is clarence thomas's mother's landlord it doesn't matter why that's not a factor What matters is Clarence never told you about it. Why would he hide that? Mary had a little man. man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From Radio Beacon to Radio Beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. In December of 2017, Leo was honored at a gathering of conservative activists at the Trump Hotel in Washington. Leonard Leo has single-handedly changed the face of the judiciary under the auspices of Ed Meese and many of the people who started the Federalist Society. He has many hats. He, that isn't even all he does. He doesn't really tell all that he does, but I know enough to know the man is a force of nature. The problem here is not Leonard Leo. He is not a king of Republican judicial appointments. He is a fixer. He is a factotum. The interests behind him, who are anonymous, but who are paying for this exercise, that's what we need to worry about. Oh, man. Uh, You know, I I, I don't know why America doesn't pay attention to what's happening right in front of its face or when decent people who are educated in the law and, and can see the money sloshing around and, you know, have the information that we need in order to write this, uh, this, this extremist uh, thing that we're living through. Don't, don't, don't take it seriously. I, I, I'm not sure, you know, like why that is and how it's happening right in front of our faces. And, you know, it's, but I will tell you this. Uh, so now the Supreme Court has just weighed in on whether or not it's going to ban or allow this one judge in Texas in Amarillo, Texas's order to ban Mifepristone nationally to stand. And the Supreme Court said, well, not today we won't. Today we're not going to ban it. But next Wednesday we'll let you know. Next Wednesday. 
that's that was what they uh, you know decided to do about today. They just said, well, you know, we, we didn't we, we don't we're not ready to write uh, you know a really harmful opinion today. Uh, so we'll go craft it over the weekend. We'll let you know on Wednesday, you know, just exactly how extreme we're going to get in the United States of America. I I mean honestly. I'm telling you right now, the idea of nullifying everything that we, you can see it when you see 98% of America wants background checks, when you see that, you know, 79% of Republicans want to see Mifepristone left alone, they want to see it on the market. When you see, you know, like uh, 80 something percent of all Americans are like, leave abortion uh, alone, just leave it where it is. You know, just you, you people have gone crazy. And, uh, you know, we believe in freedom and, and that's the way it is. And so if I'm against abortion, I won't have one. But women are literally dying now because they're being forced to carry uh, uh, babies that will never live outside the womb to term. They're forced to have breech births of encephalitic babies. They're forced to be septic. They're forced to, you know, you, you're saying that if a, a woman has a miscarriage, she needs to be investigated. You're saying that you want vigilante justice in Texas. You want vigilante justice in Florida. You're saying that the governor can have his own police force. He could have his own militia in Florida. And you're saying that, uh, you know, Jackson, Mississippi needs, we have to help these people. They can't self-govern. So we're going to have them policed by state police because that's what's going on in Jackson. And also, you know, uh, listen, I got to tell you, you know, the reason why Memphis sounded so familiar to people when they, uh, you know, completely negated the results of a free and fair election in Memphis, Tennessee, and they, the Republicans in the state legislature of Tennessee removed, they expelled Justin Pearson, you know, Justin Jones was from Nashville, and then Justin Pearson, he had to be reinstated by his city council as well, and Pearson uh, is from Memphis. Well, why was like Memphis top of my, because Tyree Nichols was beaten to death by police officers in Memphis. And what was going on in Memphis was the people of Memphis, not only did they vote for uh, Justin Pearson to represent them, but they voted for an oversight board in Memphis of the police department. They wanted an independent oversight board to, you know, monitor uh, the policing that happens in their town in their city right so they voted for an oversight board and the state legislature the same state legislature that removed justin pearson prior to that took away from the oversight board that the people voted to create their subpoena power literally took away their ability to subpoena witnesses when there were allegations of police brutality or over policing or under policing or whatever it was right so the the state legislature inserted themselves into local elections there again and uh, took away the subpoena power of the oversight board. Well, then they went even further and they decided to take the oversight board that the voters of Memphis created and give it to the police department itself. So the police department is going to police itself yet again, which is exactly what the people of Memphis voted to change. And see, this is the kind of crap we're up against. And this stuff all flies under the radar until something so ugly happens that everyone can see it. And the thing about the Roe and the Dobbs and the, and the Mifepristone and the Justins, you know, the, it, I love the chant. The chant became no Justins, no peace. It was just brilliant. But, you know, when people have had enough, they tend to show up and say something. Look at France. Look at France. Do you know why France is protesting? Do you have any idea why there are hundreds of thousands of people on the street in France? Because Macron decided that he was going to use his executive power and undo what the people voted for. He was going to raise the retirement age in France by himself two years. He was going to raise it from 62, <laughs> 62 to 64. And they went, no. And that's why they're out on the street. But where did they go? Where did they go for their protests? They went to the businesses. They went to the richest man in France, who happens to be one of the richest men in the world. Okay? They went to his house, the guy who owns Louis Vuitton, and uh, also Hennessy, the cognac company. They went to his house. 
because they said the money's got to come from somewhere. It needs to come from you guys. We are so tired of paying into a system. And then when we get to the uh, qualification age to reap the benefits of an insurance plan that we paid into. See, here in America, you guys, I pay, I pay, you know, when I uh, work for corporate and every paycheck you get, there's uh, taxes taken out, federal taxes. Those are the taxes for Medicare and Social Security, okay? And we, we end up paying about 8% of our income for that. Well, you got corporations that pay, some pay half of it, you know, they pay their 6%. And others manage to pay absolutely nothing, nothing at all. Well, the people in France are smarter than we are. They went and protested at the home of the richest people in France. Protesters out again this morning, targeting a visit by French President Macron to Notre Dame Cathedral. This after the 12th national strike in as many weeks, Ooh. with hundreds of thousands taking to the streets. Riot police and protesters clashing here in Paris, dozens arrested. At one point, protesters storming the headquarters of Louis Vuitton. More than 100 people are injured, police using more than 1,000 canisters of tear gas, according to a civic group. In Rennes, in northwestern France, Police using water cannon amid the chaos, a car set alight. And more protests expected in a matter of hours. So that sign there, gendarme, uh, casse a toy. Uh, I speak terrible French, but uh, what it means is police, we will break you. <laughs> That's what it means. But uh, yeah, they went, to, uh, they went to the home of the person who owns LVMH, which is Louis Vuitton, Moet Hennessy, okay, uh, in, in their nationwide protest because they're trying to say somebody's got to pay for this. And, uh, you know, we already paid, so now it's your turn. Pay, pony up, kick in, kick into the kitty. We're not going to let you raise the retirement age. And here in the United States, they raised the retirement age to like 66 and six months and now 70 to get full better. And nobody even noticed. Nobody even paid any attention to it. Nobody even, uh, you know, like uh, said, oh, Oh, you did that? Oh, you're doing that? Oh, oh. You know what it took? It took them, and not even taking away books, not even taking away history, you know. No, it took them making you wear a mask for you to show up and scream and yell about the power of the state. And the, and now they're taking away the rights of women and turning us back into a Jim Crow South. And people are starting to say, okay, I get it. All things Randy at randyroads.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Overnight, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signing a bill that would ban most abortions after six weeks. What? DeSantis quietly signing the law just after 11 p.m., posting only this photo on Twitter. A stark contrast to how he publicly celebrated a 15-week ban last spring. We are here today to defend those who can't defend themselves. <laughs> Unless blocked in the court, the move will shut off access in a state that saw a 60% increase in women seeking abortion since Roe was overturned. Oh my God. Known as the Heartbeat Protection Act, it does make an exception for abortions up to 15 weeks in cases of rape, incest, or human trafficking. Okay. Have all members voted? Anger erupting in the Florida House during debate over the bill. Protests and chaos before the Republican dominated legislature passed it. This is all just circus politics meant to divide us. Democrats and critics slamming the law as extreme, with the White House saying it is out of step with the views of the vast majority of the people of Florida and of all the United States. That's true. Uh, like over 70% of all Floridians, all of us are against this, all of it. And so why isn't it happening? Why isn't it happening? Because they have 70 members of the Republican persuasion and 40 members of the Democratic persuasion. This is minority majority rule. They gerrymandered themselves into these seats and now they're gonna have circus, po that's what the, the woman in the gallery was yelling. This is circus politics meant to divide us. Oh, no truer words were ever spoken about this about this six weeks you don't even know you you don't even know you're like late for your period at, at, at six weeks you don't know you're pregnant at six weeks i don't even think half these pregnancy tests uh, well maybe now they do back in my day when you had to pee on the stick i don't think it would even uh, you know find uh, you know that you were pregnant until you know it was like a good two months a good two months i mean this is a, but you know you could go to 15 weeks because if you're raped 
or if you're the uh, uh, the victim of incest, you might have to go to court, you know, and prove it somehow. You know, just remember during your rape, collect some DNA, and then hope that the police, whatever you know, whoever they answer to, if it's you know DeSantis's militia, I doubt they'll do the work, but hope that the police can find the assailant to get a DNA sample from the assailant, you know, like sooner than 20 years down the road, like uh, E. Jean Carroll. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this is just bizarre world. And six, there was a 60% increase in travel to Florida for the purpose of abortion after the entire Southeast said, no abortion for you, women. This, this, is, this is so against the will of the people. This is so against popular opinion. This is so against what America wants to focus on. Remember they were, they were running in uh, 2022. And uh, remember they told us they were, they were there to fight crime. That's what they were there for. They're, they're, they're all about fighting crime and lowering uh, the cost of living, right? The inflation. Well, I, I have news for you. The inflation is being tamed very well. We're not in a recession. I mean, it worked out really, really good. All it took was a couple of banks to go belly up, apparently, and send the fear of God into people, you know, who have money, like big money, like the billionaires, to cut the crap. And uh, all of a sudden they say, okay, we'll stop gouging. We'll stop gouging. We'll stop. We get it. We got the message. Uh, but <laughs> anything that they don't like, anything at all that they don't like, uh, they, 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 they're going to, they, they don't care. They don't care what the, and, and here's the thing. Like I went through this whole long list about, you know, expelling people that were duly elected on doing two elections and then Abbott doing his jury nullification, right? Because he didn't like the one that uh, prevailed in the, in the gunfight. He liked the one that started the gunfight and that, guy who started the gunfight was uh, found guilty of murder now you know the trans bills like all of a sudden we have to do something do something about people that exist on this planet since the beginning of time who absolutely do nothing to take your money or hurt your life or you know do anything at all that would you know stifle your ability to earn a living or educate yourself or do anything you know but oh they're the problem right and we have to legislate against them and legislate and ban books ban books let's ban them let's ban them and undo gun laws and we have to undo gun laws in places where the locals have voted to have gun laws like new york that Bruin decision, ooh, that was a beauty. That was also the Supreme Court. See, we don't give a damn that New York uh, doesn't like guns. We want everyone armed, everyone. And we're doing it at the behest of the gun manufacturers. And there's nobody that could stop us because we own the Supreme Court. And so the Supreme Court said, we don't care about local. We don't care what the city wants. We don't care what the state wants. We care what the manufacturers want. We care what the NRA wants. And by the way, even after all of this uh, bloodshed, after all of these uh, children, dead children, three of them, three, which is what led to the Tennessee legislators standing up in the first place, to try and affect a little bit of change, like background checks, in the end they want an assault weapons ban, which most of us do too. But that's why they were expelled, right? Because they dared to say, hey, enough already. We got dead children again and again and again everywhere now. You think it can't happen here, then it happens here. You think it can't happen there, then it happens there. Over here, over there, over this place, that place, north, south, east, west, dead children everywhere. Somebody's got to step. Well, we're going to expel you, and we're going to uh, you know, uh, nullify juries that, that found for the wrong gunman, found for the dead gunman. No, no, no. We want the live gunman to be spared. We don't like that jury, so we're going to nullify that, right? And, by the way, this goes right back to the, hey, let's fire the prosecutors, right? That happened in Florida, too. The, the uh, I think his name is Warren. His last name is Warren. A uh, prosecutor in Tampa. He said, I'm not going to prosecute women for having an abortion. I'm not doing that. And uh, Ron DeSantis fired him. He was duly elected, and he fired the prosecutor. So now, if they can't fire the prosecutor in time, then they'll nullify the jury, They'll, they'll just step in and say, well, the jury was wrong. The jury chose wrong. We don't agree with the jury. I'm the governor. I'm going to nullify the jury. I mean, this is not a system in which free people can operate. This is just not a system that is, uh, you know, uh, self-policing or sustainable. And that's why they don't want us to be self-policed, okay? They, they want militias. And they want their own militia that's answerable to them, like DeSantis has a militia now, we haven't had a militia in this country since World War II, okay? 
But now he wants his own personal militia to answer to him because if the policing happens and the policing goes well, then the wrong person will end up on trial according to him or according to Abbott, and we're going to have to go in and nullify the jury. And so why don't we just uh, take the policing into our own hands a la Mississippi? This is what they did in Mississippi. They said, okay, we're going to remove the police from from, from Jackson, Mississippi, and we're going to put in state capital cops because we don't like the way you're policing yourself same thing happened in memphis oh you want an independent uh you know board to oversee the police because tyree nichols was beaten erroneously to death by police who got it completely wrong okay well we don't want that so we're going to a take away their subpoena power of this independent board you voted for oh and then we're going to move it back into the police yeah we're going to stick it in something we'll, we'll call it internal affairs because people are comfortable with that but it's going to be the police board that the people of memphis voted to have as an oversight and we'll put it back in the police jackson mississippi 80 percent black they went in there and they picked themselves i swear to god the super majority in the state house in mississippi decided an all-white court an all-white court is what jackson mississippi needs and that's what they got. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561 270 3844. 561 270 3844. You know, with all the dead people, especially the children, the children, you would think that uh, the NRA would give it a rest. Oh, no. Oh, hell no. They're having their uh, convention today. And Mr. Mike Pence, the most pious man in the room, Uh, decided to show up and say this. In the wake of tragic violence that struck here in the heartland in recent days, at a Christian school in (laughs) Nashville, Tennessee, and at a bank branch in Louisville, Kentucky, the Bible says that we mourn with those who mourn and grieve with those who grieve. (laughs) And I know I speak with everyone here when I say that our hearts and our prayers are with all the families that suffered loss and injury in these unspeakable attacks. Ignoring the motivations of the trans activists who killed three children and three adults at that Christian school in Nashville, and ignoring the mental health challenges of the man who killed five people and injured eight others in Louisville, President Biden and the Democrats have returned to the same tired arguments about gun control and gun confiscation. But we don't need gun control. We need crime control. We don't need lectures about the liberties of law-abiding citizens. We need solutions to protect our kids. He went on to say uh, that the men- because the mental health problem is so outrageous uh, that we needed more guns, not less guns. So is he saying that we should shoot the mentally ill? I- 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 I'm not clear. And when did anybody talk about confiscation? No, never. Ever? Once? No, never, ever. They were talking about, uh, you know, banning future assault weapon ownership or background checks for, you know, uh, or red flag laws for people who were, you know, deemed like like the red flag law in Louisville would have actually stopped that shooter. His his mother is on a 911 call saying, you know, uh, my son has a gun and uh, he's not OK. OK, uh, he's he's under mental health care. Uh, you know, uh, he's getting care. It would have stopped him from being able to buy a gun if his parents felt like there was a place where they could go and say, don't ever sell a gun to my son because, you know, he's uh, mentally uh, challenged right now. He's going through some things. But there is no red flag law. And that's what they were asking for. They were asking for a red flag law. They were asking for background checks, uh, gun storage rules, you know, some safety rules, uh, you know, for the kids that take the guns from their parents, That this kind of thing. No, no, no. They always have to go there. They always have to go to, you know, uh, they're wrong, we're right. Uh, Even though their version of being right is dead people and dead children, and they think that that's the price you pay for freedom, we're not free. We're not free. And the amount of freedom that we can expect in the future, should they have their way, is like none. None. You won't be able to read what you want. You won't be, this, 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 uh, Moore v. Harper, this, this Supreme Court case. Uh, the independent legislature theory? You understand what that is, right? 
That means that the legislature, the super majorities in places like Mississippi, in places like uh, Florida, in places like Tennessee, et cetera, right? They can undo the results of a free and fair election. And this is why I'm showing you that they're undoing jury verdicts. They're undoing, uh, you know, elections already. You know, they don't like the choice that you made. They don't like the fact that your uh, state legislator is going to stand up and say, we need red flag laws or stand up and say enough dead kids or stand up and say, you know, uh, uh, racism is a thing. You disagree with them. So therefore you get to remove them. You get to expel them. You get to undo the results of a free and fair election. What makes, and they're firing prosecutors that, 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 you know, say we're not going to prosecute women for, you know, exercising a right that they have to privacy in their medical decisions. You don't want politics in the doctor's office. Okay, you just don't. Well, we'll just expel them. We'll just, and now, you know, we'll fire the prosecutors or we'll nullify the verdict of the jury or whenever you vote for an oversight board to have oversight over, you know, schools or have oversight over the policing and you're, it, we'll just disband it. We'll just, you know, insert ourselves in with our supermajority and we'll just get rid of whatever you voted for. It's pretty soon your legislature will overturn the results of the election. That's the next big change that the Supreme Court is going to uh, preside over. Now, the idea that, you know, we had this uh, judge in, in Amarillo that went there, and now we have to wait till Wednesday to find out if, as women people, we're free to see what Alito and Roberts and Clarence and uh, Amy and Kavanaugh think about, uh, you know, uh, these people who cheated and lied to get their positions are now going to be the arbiter of what is uh, free and what is just. We know they lied. We saw them lie. Gorsuch totally cheated. That seat did not belong to him. It belonged to, uh, it didn't belong to Trump to give. It belonged to Barack Obama to give, to, to nominate and for the Senate to confirm. But you know, Mitch McConnell said, no, 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 no. I don't like that. I'm going to nullify that. I'm just going to say no. And filibuster the hell out of it. You know why we don't have a, uh, a law that codifies Roe v. Wade? Do you know what happened with that? I meant to tell you when I played that other clip of, uh, of, of my boyfriend in heaven, of Sheldon Whitehouse telling you uh, on, I guess, the 11th of May that they were going to, in 2022, that they were going to vote to codify Roe v. Wade after the Supreme Court's uh, you know, fix was in. The reason, the reason why that never happened is because they filibustered it. The Senate literally, they, there was a vote. It was 49-51 against protecting the right of women in this country. So why 51? Why 51, Randy? Joe Manchin, that's why. Yeah. They literally filibustered the, uh, uh, the bill that would have protected our rights. I mean, they're showing you everything. Everything. There's nothing that happened in the past two weeks that doesn't show you that they don't like you. They don't trust you. They don't like you. They don't want you voting. They don't want your opinion. Don't poll people. Don't ask them if they're for this or that because it doesn't matter what they say. They say that they're for uh, sensible gun regulations. We don't care. They say they're for, you know, an oversight board for the policing in their neighborhood. We don't care. They say that they're for, you know, the ability to debate gun laws. They don't care. They say that this guy committed murder. I don't like who, uh, uh, I like who he killed. I don't like uh, the perpetrator. I, I, I like the perpetrator. I don't like who he killed. Therefore, I'm going to overturn the results of a jury. Well, maybe I'll have to travel to another state. Oh, no, we're going to limit the right of uh, women to travel. Women? What are we, the Taliban now? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And wasn't it, I mean, that, the, the hypocrisy of it is so in your face. Remember when the, the same people that are rooting for all this were saying, no Sharia law. No, sh- that's what we got. That's what this is. These are the mullahs, and they're sitting in judgment of 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 what it, you know you can do as a free person in this country, based on their interpretation of their religion. It's sick, but it's totally on. It's totally happening. And it has everything to do with your safety and security, your ability to make medical decisions, your ability to prosecute people for murder. They don't like it. Oh, well, I'll pardon them. 
people commit fraud against their own viewers, their own listeners, we'll pardon them too. Steve Bannon. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Would you support a federal ban on abortions? I would simply say that um, the fact of the matter is when you look at the issue of abortion, one of the challenges that we have, we continue to go to the most restrictive conversations without broadening the scope and taking a look at the fact that I'm 100 percent pro-life. I never walk away from that. But the truth of the matter is that when you look at the issues on abortion, I start with the very important conversation I had in a banking hearing when I was sitting in my office and listening to Janet Yellen, the secretary of the Treasury, talk about increasing the labor force participation rate for African-American women who are in poverty by having abortions. Uh, I think we're just having the wrong conversation. I ran down to the banking hearing to see if I heard her right. Are you actually saying that a mom like mine should have an abortion so that we increase the labor force participation rate? That just seems ridiculous to me. And so I'm going to continue to have a serious conversation about the issues that affect the American people. I'm going to start by pointing out the absolute hypocrisy of the left on the most one of the more important issues what kind of word salad was that what the hell was he talking that's tim scott who uh, you know started an exploratory committee to be the uh, presidential nominee for the republican party in 2024 uh saying a bunch of uh, words i don't even know what he, do you know what he's talking about I, i'm genuinely confused at a, loss, at a complete loss as to what his point could have been <laughs> no clue <laughs> He's blaming Janet Yellen for his mother, considering, I don't know. I have no idea. All right, so let me just uh, tell you that on Monday, on Monday, uh, Dominion and Fox will uh, be in court. Uh, Dominion is obviously suing Fox for uh, defamation, for uh, reckless disregard for the truth, for lying, uh, basically. And the trial will begin at the point where the, dr- the judge is going to instruct the jury, before they even say word one, before opening arguments, Uh, that there is agreement that Fox lied about Dominion. And so all that's left for you, jury, is to find out if they knew the truth and willfully disregarded it or recklessly disregarded it, or if they knew they were lying, if they knowingly decided to lie. That's it. That's all that's left for you. That and the damages. Okay? And and that's what's... uh, And it's not going to be on the TV, which I find just so annoying and so it's such a disservice to the american people because if you're trying to show that a giant jagunda media outlet owned by a foreign guy named rupert murdoch uh was literally in the know about the fact that there was no fraud in the election and that they chose to lie about it anyways and that they withheld evidence that they knew about it anyways and that they uh, uh have taped phone calls with their guests asking them what proof do you have and they go well, I can't prove anything and then said it on the TV that what they couldn't prove was true then I think it should be on the TV so the people who watched it can watch this but that's not the case here that's not the case here all right uh, brother David well sister this is so funny because as you know I'm memorizing on tyranny by Timothy Snyder since there's only a couple of vowels between banning books and burning books hmm. um, and I just rolled it open just as you were talking to lesson number 10 believe in truth to abandon facts is to abandon freedom if nothing is true then no one can criticize power because there is no basis upon which to do so if nothing is true then all is spectacle the biggest wallet pays for the most blinding light ah. I, yeah you, Thoughts in your seatbelts. What it's a great line! I never, I, I, I didn't, I didn't ever, you know, like uh, yeah. pay attention to that one. But that, that, the, the, the say That's it again. 10. Say it again. The oh, biggest wallets. The biggest wallet pays for the most blinding lights. Whew. That's deep, man. <laughs> that, that, when, that, that just jabs right at the heart of it all, because that is what's oh, going on. Kind of, sort of, totally. Um, <laughs> Oh, come along with me, we go to Gepawi, and there you're sure to see how we should protest. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, oh, I mean, it's so here, and it, as, as you said, it's, it's, here. it's transparent. Yeah. It's, it is so here. It's here. It's right in front of our face. I said, they, they, you know, they went there. We have to go there, too. And there is here. And we are here. 
We are here. And and the, look, the only the only thing left for us to do is to literally go after the lawbreakers. Clarence Thomas has finally broken the only law, the only law that applies to him in his job, and he's decided to break that law. And that's where we started the day, right? So you have to follow the money. You have to follow the money. If you want to get rid of corruption, then you have to start with the people who are buying the corruption, who want the corruption, who encourage the corruption, pay for the corruption. Exactly, so true. And, and, and that's why I'm looking at France, you know, every day, uh, you know, I wake up, CNN is covering the French, uh, you know, revolution, basically. And, you know, I see how smart they are. They're peaceful, and they're, but they're going to the right place. They're going to the place of the, of the richest people in France. And they're saying to them, time for you to pony up. Time to pay. We. Oui. <laughs> exactly so. Um you know, here's the, another thing. I have been had to work Tuesdays recently, but I finally got to listen to Trey Crowder and Mark Agee's weekly skews. And their guest last Tuesday was Gloria Johnson. Oh, really? That's and, wonderful. And, and it was kind of wonderful. But it made me think of something I said to Sean, Comrade Sean long ago. Um, y- y- you need to be a guest on that show, Randy. On Trey show? They, <laughs> Yeah, on his on his weekly skews where they cover the week of the news before. I would love to. I, I, I'll I'll make it known. <laughs> yeah, 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 because you know, I it just she was so there, and it was it's so the kind of thing we all need to be doing now. You, we've we've got to speak up, um, and I believe we are. I we think have Tennessee to show up. Pointing the way. We, we have, have to, to show, show up. up. That's what happened in Tennessee. People showed yeah. up. People had had enough. Exactly. That's what's happening. People are showing up at school boards. People are showing up in the gallery of state houses, and people are starting to understand it's all happening in the state house. That that's the place that was the most gerrymandered for the benefit of the corporations that toil in those states. And that those corporations are never going to be happy until we have monopolies again. And those monopolies control everything. They control production. They control the oil. They control the gas. They control the railroads. They control the the medical. They control everything. Okay. And and, and, and until and unless, uh, you know, they are stopped, they will not stop. They want to turn the clock back to the robber baron days where there's like. At least. Yes. Right. And and it, that was not a free time in this country. It was not a good time in this country. Absolutely not. Um, and there are still more of us, but since the minority is, for the moment, ruling, that majority of us needs to get out there and be there. That's right. And make our voices heard. That's right. And I believe we are. That's right. And you know what's crazy is people didn't even need you know to have somebody tell them where to go or what to do. They all knew. They all knew exactly where to go. They all knew exactly uh, you know whose house to show up at. They knew uh, exactly which uh, you know. Precisely. Right. People know. They know something's wrong. And some people are smart enough to say, "Let's go to the legislature. Let's sit in the gallery. Let's let's watch what's going on. Let's you know." We don't have any local news. We don't have any local newspapers anymore. And that's why they chose that place to, uh, you know, exert their power. It's, it's, what the, it's what they've dreamt of. For a very long time. And that's certainly what's going on with Social Security and the, the last trench of money. Um, number 19, be a patriot. Set a good example of what America means for the generations to come. They will need it. Yeah. Ah, love you always. Love you, too. Uh, Xavier in Las Vegas. Hello, Las Vegas. That's right? what it says, Las Vegas. <laughs> oh, I might have messed that one up. What is it, Los Angeles? I think it might be L.A. City of Angels. Ah. It is L.A. I apologize. Uh, come on now. And, Randy, I just want to say hello. Happy Friday. Thank you. And I thank you. And uh, thank you for taking my call. Mm-hmm. And just real quick, I just want to say, hey. Uh, um, uh, are you safe over there? Do you have your little floaties and stuff? No, we're okay. I, I'm a few miles up the road. It was uh, just like somebody turned a faucet on and just never turned it off, though. I will say the airport finally opened this morning, so everything's okay. Oh. But, I mean, nobody came to get us. Even even Mr. Man with his little white hullabaloo boots, he didn't show up. Okay. Well, he can't because the, the airport was closed. You know, <laughs> right. couldn't even do it. So. Right, right. Hey, Randy, yeah. just one, uh, I just want to wish you. Uh, happy weekend. Have Thanks. a wonderful day. Thank you for taking my call. Sure thing. Uh, Spencer in West Virginia. Yeah, you just have a wonderful program. But I would like to know why the justices that are uh, 
making their decisions. They're practicing medicine without a license. Bingo. Then you have three. Then you have three judges that lie. So we have a Supreme Court. Yes, no one's above the law. I beg to differ. I think the Supreme Court is above the law. That's why they have acted the way that they do. Well, there is no law except the one. And finally, we have proof from the man who helped Clarence take the bribe, saying he gave the bribe. So we're halfway there. So let's see uh, whether or not we can hold Clarence, the Supreme, accountable for the one law that applies to him that he broke. Let's see if we can do that much in this here country. Let's see if we can do that. Anyway, Joe Biden went to Ireland and got a standing ovation. It was magnificent. Be proud.